people, my arm just popped. Hopefully you guys could have heard that on the on the audio here because Hopefully? that fucking hurt. Yeah, I want them to hear. I want them to hear like just what I go through. Is my body's breaking down. Oh god, my arm. Look, my back hurts. Uh, speaking of breaking down, it sounds like your fucking mic's breaking. Wait, for real, doesn't it? Does it really sound bad? Ah, oh, shit. Did it just really happen right now? I think it's okay now, but at the start of the show, I, I, was, I thought it was either mine or your connection. <clears throat> It was probably just my voice. I'm just like, I'm, I'm like a half robot. I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, shit. God. Oh, it's actually fucking up. Okay. <laughs> now God it's damn. fine. Now it's fine. Okay. Well, people, let me know in the chat if you guys care anything fucking up. Because even though it might sound good in the Zoom, there could be a, uh, a situation happening from somewhere else. Like, I don't know. Like, who knows what the fuck's going yeah. on. But like, I'm listening on to the edge. stream now, so it's fine. Yeah, but right over here, gaining into that song. Living on the edge. Fighting crime. Spinning webs. Special guests. I don't know. That's part of the song. Right. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's not, but sure. Yeah, it, it's all good. But anyways, guys, hello, welcome. Um, we are here. We're back again. Another week has begun, man. We're gonna be talking about like some some nerdy stuff. You know, Halo's happening this week. I, I did not know if you knew, by the way. Like on Thursday, you know, Paramount. Um, we can get the Halo TV series, man. Oh yeah, it's like it's what five days? Isn't that the same yeah. uh, week as a uh, fucking uh, Moon Knight? Yeah, that's gonna be Who interesting. Gives a... <laughs> Who gives a shit about Halo? Like, I'm sorry. Well, like, who, okay, well, who gives a shit about Moon Knight? Or, or Moon no, Knight. you know why? I can't say the name called, right. No, you know why? It's because it's called Marvel's Moon Knight. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh shit, Marvel, let's go. Well, dude, it was so much to the fact that, like, okay, so when I was doing tags for Moon Knight last time, like Corey talked about it or whatever, it got to, oh, it's next week. Okay, so that's smart of them to do that. But, like, I remember yeah, looking this yeah. up, dude. You know what the, the tag was when I looked what? this stuff up? The main key phrase was Moon Knight movie, 2022. Even the fans who looked this shit up did not know if this was a movie or a TV series. Yeah, just but based on, on numbers. Disney Plus, and it's a, and it's just just saying Marvel in front of it. Like, you're gonna get a lot of people in there. When it comes to Halo, most people like well, they've been asking for since 2001, man. Like, people have been wanting Halo forever. Yes, decades. they've been asking it for 20 years. There are people that are alive, bef like before the like people that were born in the two. Wait, so what, people are alive? Are no, you know what I mean. Like, there are people that have been born in between, waiting for some of this shit, and it's like. The it's on Paramount Plus, so that's immediately gonna get people going. What the fuck? I honestly don't think this is really like I'd be surprised if this gets more than a season because it seems like it's gonna be really expensive. Uh, the fan base is is split because some people like it, but some people think it looks like cosplay trash. But I'm like, it's also a seven foot Master Chief outfit. It's gonna be kind of hard not to look like seven foot Master Chief cosplay. But it seems like a lot of people are really tearing it apart, and it's like. I don't think it's getting as much fanfare because as soon as the trailer for Moon Knight came out, I was like, oh shit, let's check this out. With Halo, it was kind of like, it was mixed. But that's part for the course. Like, here's the thing. When it comes to Moon Knight, I think we're in a situation where, like, you know, we're going to say, oh, that's my, that's our old school one. Holy shit. That, that's the old chat tag. Fuck the chat tag. Now, uh, sure. <laughs> I accidentally showed, like, our old fucking browser window. Um, Your, oh, yeah. We used to have that up? Well, no, because in case something goes wrong with this one, I actually have, like, everything on back. Huh. I, I even have another presentation saved to my hard drive. Um, that's the Anthony Wilson Jr. version. I mean, it literally has Why? the M for Midnight Chat Chat. Just, because, just in case. Or I maybe... know, I just find it weird that you go that far back as opposed to just, eh, fuck it, you know what? It's just the entire screen and our webcam. Oh, motherfucker, don't you still have Batman on the last 10 streams that have nothing to do with Batman on your shit? Yeah, like... but I'm unprofessional I... making it up as I go along. What, what do you think this is? A little bit more professional. I don't, I'm a fucking child. I'm not even good at podcasting. What a are you talking bit about? More like, <laughs> a little bit more. A tiny bit more. Like 2.4. Still, we're in the same boat, me and you, goddammit. No, we're not. I've only been doing this for like three months. You've been doing this for five years. You've been with me the last six years? I have Yeah, but that's not like I've been behind it. But that's not like I've been like producing the show. I've just been showing up. Oh, anyways, here's the no Gene. Uh, by the way, I think I think executive producer comes of the in. chat attack here. I guess. <laughs> Come on, it's like you guys gotta learn something from me, shit. Um, but the thing is, oh Gene, it seems like whenever time Gene's in the chat, then me and you start fighting. Are we doing this and we're unknowingly doing this just to entertain Gene? I mean, no, but uh, Gene I went back. Was in my chat earlier, and he was looking for you. So. Oh shit! Here's you might the thing, be the though, common dude. denominator. Here. I gotta bring up something with you. I went back and watched. Uh, so. People, like, I don't know, I have a lot of shit going on in my life, I'm gonna be honest. I'm not gonna get into a big thing explaining it or whatever, but it's like, I was, like, in a bad fucking mood. I think Alan was in a bad mood, too. I forgot you and I had a straight-up fight on the show, dog. I don't even know if you remember this. Like, last week. Oh, I week. remember it. Yeah, like, I went back and I got uncomfortable. I was, like, <laughs> like as, like, I'm, like, trying to watch it, like, as a fan. Like, oh, let me see what they're up to. Or, you know, like, see what I'm up to. How was that show? Because, uh, hey, Jet, Jet's over there drinking right now. Um, She was probably mm -hmm. drinking that night just to get through fucking us going at it but it got to a point where like 
because I was going through and I was like, I want to like make clips and stuff and like put them on YouTube or whatever. So I'm like going through just like browsing, watching it in fast mode and stuff. We still have a YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. I I'm actually collecting everything though, and I'm gonna have like an archival. Like when there's a week where I'm not completely fucked with stuff to do, I'm gonna upload an entire fucking thing and name a new playlist called like the new chat attack with the NU and all that stuff. So yeah, we're all good. <laughs> Um, it's just, dude, it's a, I don't want to get into how long that shit takes. Oh, I, I, trust me, I, I used to do clips as well. That shit yeah. takes forever. And then the biggest thing, too, is, like, every time we did, like, these three live streams, uh, at the same time, Facebook would throw one off and, and flag us, and then YouTube yeah. would flag us, and it's like, well, I don't want to, like, fuck up the Twitch stream, because, like, if, in order to make it work on YouTube and Facebook, I would additionally have to, like, turn off the, the YouTube trailers and just leave the fa leave the camera on me or leave the camera on you. And as a viewer, I actually don't really like that. Like, I don't know. I mean, you you have a beautiful face. Um, Hi. you know, me, I don't like my face too much, but Oh, I saw your just... imitation of me. Apparently when I'm not on stream, you like to talk as much shit as possible. No, not really. I, I, I... Oh really? Really? I saw that fucking clip that Tommy made. Wait, which one? Like what what did the I one do? you're imitating, you're like, oh that is so hot. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm so hot, dude. I think I did that. I literally on never show. said that ever. No. no, but when you take all those selfies and you're like, you know, it's like, oh. Yeah. I like taking photos. Do you ever so do this, Alan? Like... Do you ever go, uh, 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 do you do that shit too? Fucking no. pervert. Do you? Actually, yeah. <laughs> Gee, thank you for subscribing. Thank you so much. That was one well, of the most ill The worst possible times. time, but thank you. Yeah, I know. Um, I should have, dude, if I would have just waited two more seconds, you guys wouldn't see the, the ton and the, the finger thing. By the way, like, Oh, I'm like all over the place. So phone. if like, you just happen to know Gene would subscribe at this exact possible moment? Yeah, I'm pretty smart. I'm, Are you I'm Jesus? Like, yeah, you see the sun? This is like a whole thing. No, you. that's just Arizona. Yeah. Pizzeria Hut? What kind of ghetto ass shit is that, Jed? <laughs> bro, bro. <laughs> Pizzeria so, Hut. So, uh, oh awesome. my god. That, so, um, what was it? Uh, Pizza Hut. Uh, that reminds me. So I was going to get food earlier before the show and I was going to eat. I go downstairs and I guess my brother must have got Pizza Hut a while ago. I look into this box and I look it up. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck this is. So I close it. And then my mom's like, oh, uh, there's stuff over there. Your brother went and got Pizza Hut. It's a chicken in that box. I'm like, didn't smell like chicken. It didn't look like chicken. So I open it back up and I look into it. It's deep fried pickles. Oh, God, the Jet special. <laughs> Pretty much. I, my first thought was Jet. My second thought was, why does my brother and why does Jet have the same fucking palate? Yeah, it's no, ridiculous. it's ridiculous. I, no, I, I wasn't even gonna try that out of curiosity because that sounds fucking horrible. They might as well be part of the fucking Sinister Six with them fucking crazy asses. No, but obviously, Jet's talking about Pizza Hut. There's no Pizzeria Hut, I'm pretty sure. But um, uh, who knows? The thing is, though, is like her dad is really, really like into like what they had. Like he knows like the fucking perfect spot for like pizza or like certain things or whatever. Yeah. But you guys got Pizza Hut. I'm kind of surprised by that because I would imagine like your dad be like, "No, like we're gonna get this shit." She, uh, her, her dad's Stone Cold Steve Austin, by the way. But he's like, "Oh no, we're not gonna do that yet. We're gonna have like you know uh, garlic on the pizza." You know, he talks just like that. It's great, gibberish. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, see. it's you. Like, you're not really good at, like, nailing other people's accents. Wow, really? You're gonna you're gonna admit that on the show. I appreciate it. I said you're that. not good. Oh, I thought you said, I, I literally just thought you said that I'm just good. I literally said, like, I don't know if that's what he actually sounds like, because you're not good at making other people's accents. Oh, uh, I guess I'm just optimistic. And you took that as a compliment, yeah. so kudos. I was, you, know, you know what, dude? I should keep doing that, because I was really happy for, like, two <laughs> Wait, whenever I compliment you in general, you think I'm lying. The one time I don't, you take it as a compliment. Well, yeah, I'm an optimist. You know, I'm like a glass half full. You are kind of not person. an optimist, Jesus fucking Christ. I am. And Ryan's like, your tensions might get shorter and shorter by the minute. I know, dude. Well, um, that's, by the way, that's mean. <laughs> I probably got HD uh, t television. HD. Fuck. He has HD, HD. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm highly uh, dumb. <laughs> it's okay, you have HDMI. <laughs> he's like, if you want garlic bread with the pizza, give me a hell yeah. You know, I, by the way, I know that he's going to be doing those hell yeahs at WrestleMania. Oh, you probably already know this, Alan. Guess what? What? Stone Cold Steve Austin's coming back. WrestleMania. The silence is deafening. Yeah, I know. God damn it. You're not what happy do you for me? want me to say? I'm happy oh, for you. Boy, Every time there's a comic book bullshit fucking trailer, I'm like, hey, Alan, did you see the new derp, derp, the super duper fucking Captain Hero guy? Yeah, and then I go, well, you know, yada, yada, go, you're a fucking loser. I'm like, okay. Well, well, come fine, a fucking fuck loser. You. Give me something and say, oh, you're gay. No, it's men. funnier this way, honestly. I, I mean, this was pretty funny. Uh, yeah. You know, hopefully and Tommy makes it funnier. Because, so... uh, 
Well, okay, so now, so are, are you gonna let me assume that of you now and not argue it all the time? Because you have you don't watch wrestling, so you you obviously don't like it. I never said that. It but not so liking it, it is closer to hating it than loving it. No, I'm in the middle. I actually like wrestling. I just don't watch it. Dude, that's by the way, you and me, like this is the thing. And I know it's gonna sound, it's gonna wrestling. sound kind of gay. Wrestling. I've enjoyed it more than I haven't. I will say, and, and I'm not even like insulted by this revelation, but it's like you know, it might sound kind of gay, and you guys make fun of me. Go ahead, be that guy in 2022 oh, makes fun of gay people. But the thing is, is like, you and I could bond so much, bro. Like on Mondays, just like after we done with the show, like, hey Nick, let's watch fucking WWE Raw. It's like, dude, no, I hate you. But the fact that you asked makes you feel good in here. It's like warm. Appreciate that, dude. No, but you you won't do it, yeah, because because you're, you're right. Because you're, you're all lies. Yeah, on the show you'd be willing to say, I I actually like wrestling. It's fine, but never, never do you actually come up with us watching wrestling together. I literally watched wrestling with you like four times. Yeah, it was my idea, and then you were with and? a bunch of people. You're with a bunch of people. You're in there to hang around with everybody. You weren't hanging out with me. You don't love me. You don't fucking love me. Sorry, I couldn't hear you over the daily text I sent you asking me how you are. Don't, they don't even have sound. I have it on mute. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, honestly. I have everything on mute as well. But you know how people are where they don't mute? Yeah. Like Ganja, who refuses to, no to yeah. mute a notification? Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> no, for the show, I actually have... <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. Uh, I have Jet on mute right now. <laughs> that's fine. That's Jet on the show. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's literally the only reason why. But the thing is, sometimes I forget... <laughs> So I'll literally like uh, have her on mute, and then she'll be messaging me after the show, like, "Hey, where fuck are you?" And I'm watching Profit. I'm not really paying attention and stuff. Bring back Jim Crow. What the hell? That's a terrible uh, username. Oh, no. Can we ban that guy right now? Is that is that allowed? Well, uh, because I think this guy is uh, oh account created uh, yesterday. This guy is a problem. Yeah, get rid of him. Uh, yeah, you're gone. Yeah, goodbye. Get out of here. I don't care if your account was made ten fucking years ago and you're the, the head of Twitch. Yeah, it would explain a lot. But that's stupid. Why would you? Why would you make that fucking thing? Because he wants to be edgy and funny. Yeah, no, Shock that's humor. not good. That's not good. I don't want to uh, judge you all the way. Maybe you died up a crazy name or something. But it's just like, come on, dude. Unless your unless your actual legal name is Jim Crow, and even then, I really think you should change it. Yeah. The the thing is, I gotta stop reading fucking usernames. I'm like, bring back Jim Crow, and it's like <laughs> that could be clipped out. <laughs> well, we also did that talk of it. Oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah, we did because I didn't know who that was. We so people we have uh there was a guy, um, Harriet Tub Girl. Oh Jesus Christ, that's not good. Um but no, so the thing is, um our old host who was pretty much in my position, Anthony Wilson Jr., um, he was uh or he's not was, he's still black. Uh he, he's a black guy. <laughs> so, he listened to a bunch of Papa Roach or something and turned white. No, nah, he's a black you. guy. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but no, so the thing is, is I remember, like, for one, I, his birthday is on June 19th. And he's like, it's Juneteenth. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit, like, it's his birthday, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, it's, unfortunately, my birthday is here. I'm like, oh, yeah, because it's summer, it's hot, you know, like, I, I, I totally get you, Anthony. And he's like, no, 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 like, um, you know, Juneteenth, it brings up a lot of stuff. I'm like, okay, well, explain <laughs> Juneteenth to me. So right away, I'm already doing, like, some... Like, it's not good. If you're a black friend of mine, you're probably irritated at this point. Like, oh, really? You don't give a shit enough to know this so you know i already felt bad and then yeah. um our, our friend 90s made a joke of like damn man nick's over here saying bring back them jim crow laws or something <laughs> and then i was like oh jimmy like i thought it was like a sauce or something like i was like i was like bringing up like uh like like jimmy like crack corn i don't care or some shit yeah and uh they explained that to me so i referenced it the week after like on the show or like in the after hours or something and i got the name wrong I was like Jim Brown Ooh. or something. I was like, yeah, man, <laughs> over here acting like you're like a descendant of Jim Brown or something. Anthony's like, you didn't pay attention when we fucking told you? Like, what the fuck? And I was like, okay, I'm sorry. Like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to act like I care too, too much about issues that are not Mexican issues, like in the future. Because if I say the wrong thing, it's going to be completely like, it's going to make shit worse as far as like how I look as a person versus like, because you know how people like will go online, there's like a big like racial thing that happens or a holiday. Oh, yeah. And then, like, they'll still act like they care. And I'm not saying that they don't actually care. It's, it's the virtue yeah. signal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I can't virtue signal. So, like, you know, we'll get into stuff like this on the show. Um, where we'll talk about, like, women's rights or, like, a really awful thing that happened. But I will always, uh, right before we get into the topic, I always say, just so you guys know, I don't actually give a shit. Like, this is awful, and I can read the room and know that's awful. But, like, I, if I get something wrong, it's going to make me look fake. So just right away, like... 
Well, your guys it's issues? actually a specific reason. Uh, and on Facebook, I I never argue politics ever. Yeah. Like if I'm in a Facebook chat, you'll never see me in one of those. Like like again, and we, yeah. we me and me and Nick moderate the fucking uh, the double toasted fan page. I have never, and I never will pop into one of those. Like you know, oh Ukraine versus Russia or Trump, whatever the fuck. Because for one very important reason, I'm a fucking idiot, like a complete fucking moron with the IQ of a dumbass. I that, can agree to that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know shit about politics. And then someone's like, well, don't you do a political podcast? Yeah. With two people that know a lot about politics. So if I say some dumb shit, I get called out immediately. Yeah. I don't accidentally type some misinformation in the chat. And then someone maybe that's just dumb as I am believes that. She's like, no, on the show, I get called out immediately. Luckily, I've, I've learned enough just through osmosis to be able to like, hey, I can actually figure out, you know, the right side or the wrong side of things. And I can form my own opinion on things. But I still also know it's like, hey, I'm also a fucking idiot. And I want to make sure I don't spread because trust me, there's a lot of fucking idiots. One just got paid $100 million to say the N-word on Spotify. Yeah, I know. Uh, wait, who, who's that again? Because I heard about Joe this. Joe Rogan. Oh, he said the N-word? Oh, like 70 times. <laughs> Oh, okay. If it's like shit from like way back in the old days, I, I no. Uh, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he, this man started off with like if he kept his own dumb stoner comedy, whatever. It's like okay, he's a dumb stoner comedy podcast, whatever. There's a hundred of those, but now he's like shifted into like this political like I'm not like the fucking center point of politics now because he's bringing on all these people. And he always has something to fucking say. He's brought on Ben Shapiro's dry dick ass every goddamn fucking time he can. Just to give him his fucking platform. He brings Alex Jones every time he can. Like, if he stayed dumb stoner, that'd be one thing, but he is a voice. Of, some people think he's a voice of fucking reason. That's, and that's, okay, that's even, I'm so glad you said that because that's literally all I want to say. Because <laughs> I, I don't watch Joe Rogan anymore either just because I got irritated with the, the people he would have on, but I've never been like against Joe himself because one thing that people have to really, really like hold on to and stop getting shit confused, but like, you know, it's people that are making him that smart. Like, he'll be the first to tell you. He even did, I, I just watched this recently. He did a 10-minute Spotify thingy of just saying, like, I'm stu He literally said what you said earlier. Like, guys, I'm stupid. I'm a guy who smokes weed, gets drunk, and does his podcast, and I just am interested in the other opinion. I want to give everybody a chance to, to say their opinion, but, like, guys, like, I, I, I don't don't listen to me. Like, you okay, know what I mean? The, like, problem is, the problem is, the problem is, like you, you, we we get disprove like basically disprove why not necessarily this podcast is better than what Joe Rogan's doing, but the situation is like we're both fucking idiots, but we will cut a discussion. We don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Joe Rogan true, won't. Yeah. He won't. He'll keep going. So it doesn't matter. That if might he mean he has, has bigger balls than us though, because I'm I'm just scared. I do that out of fear. <laughs> like, I don't want to piss anybody. No, off. you do that out of just not wanting to fucking look crazy or look like he does. Because the problem is he keeps going. Every he doesn't matter if he has a two minute disclaimer at the start. Saying this is all parody or whatever the fuck he wants to say this week, he'll still go on for hours with poli real political figures, either from just like from either fucking side, giving them a platform. Alex Jones, who was consistently causing issues with his conspiracy theories and literally just saying the Sandy Hook fucking shooting never happened, and got sued at the wazoo and got fired from every platform and couldn't make a single dime of any of his bullshit, goes on Joe Rogan's podcast. And guess what? Now he has a platform to say all of the stupid shit because Joe Rogan doesn't care. He's just like, hey, this will get me views. It's the only thing he cares about. That's the fucking problem. Like, I uh, I never really watched Joe Rogan's stuff, but he always had people that I liked to be on there. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, maybe I'll be a fan. But then after a while, I'm just like, look, man, I do not like what you're doing with your platform. So fuck it. I'm not going to watch this shit or listen to whatever the fuck. I guess I'm in the same boat with you, but it's like... I don't know. Like, for me, it depends on the guest, too, because Joe Rogan, even the stand-up, people always say, like, man, like, the very famous stand-up comedian's like, no, 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 you're famous because Joe Rogan experience. Your stand-up is completely fucking awful. Like, his, he's <laughs> not funny. <laughs> you know, but he has plenty of people around him. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, and then Fear Factor, did you watch Fear Factor because of Joe I Rogan? Did. No. no, 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 I watched it back in the day, but I forgot he was on. No, it, exactly. Because it's like, what the fuck did he do? Uh, you eat a cockroach, and you eat a horse dick, and uh, you drink cum. So much eating of animals. Yeah, and so much come and and dicks, you know. But he was a UFC, like he yeah. was. Oh yeah, I think true. one of the claims of fame is he was a UFC. And I'm like, hey, I'm sure he could do his job right. I'm sure he's funny. He has Joey Diaz on there all the goddamn time. That might as well be the chat attack. And fucking Pretty much. Years. Like Chris Dacas, thank you very much. And 89 in your name, so I'm apparently you're probably born in 1989, like me. We got that in common, good sir. Maybe. Um, but yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it was just just finishing up. It's like yeah, like it's as dumb as this show kind of be, but we understand. It's like hey. We're not seeing you're trying to change the hearts and minds. Hell, even the Metropolis, when you do the Illuminati, we're not necessarily trying to change the thoughts and minds. We're simply just trying to say opinions of people you 
don't aren't normally allowed to hear not the right wing or whatever the fuck usually it's always white aristocrats that are getting the spotlights because they're the only ones anyone ever gives a fuck about but anyone that just happens to be anything darker than a shade of milk gets completely fucking ignored yeah so it's like hey fuck it we're doing a, a, a bi poc uh fucking podcast and that's our that's our uh that's our entire brand yeah i mean i, I do try to sell myself as white um but no, i'm just playing <laughs> I'm pretty sure you do, but sure. Anyway. No, you know what? People have always expected that out of me. Well, by the way, people expect that out of you too. Like, you know, there's only so many times yeah. you can correct people. I'm Arab. I'm Arab. I'm oh, fucking no, Arab. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to correct it every goddamn time. Not because, oh, I'm afraid to be white. Oh, no. It's because I'm not going to sit here and be something that I'm not. Yeah. Me, I'll be okay with being something I'm not. You know, as long as you pay me. I'm, I'm... <laughs> pay you to be white. I mean, maybe, you know, like. That'd be the weirdest sponsor ever. We're sponsored by the Ku Klux Klan, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, like <laughs> Arabian Facts. Where's that from? I don't know where that's from. I'm to do the Arabian Nights thing. I'll fucking fight you. I'll fight you in the streets. Uh, in the Arabian Nights. What is this? are going to say that shit. I'll fight you. Like, okay, let's go. I'm like, I guess we're fucking fighting. <laughs> At that point, just don't fight. Just, you know, yeah, probably. Let's fucking go then. It's like, yeah, don't, don't, please, God. Because you, especially when you drink a little bit, you, you're a little, like, on for oh. anything. Like, you, that fucking, when we're in L.A., when we're at the casino, and you uh, argued with fun. five or six toasties about Game of Thrones. That was not my fault! That was not my it fault! It was, uh, you were screaming right next that to me. Was, I'm just, no, like, no, eating no, my no. fries, no. and I'm looking at you, and you're just like, Hey, you fucking Game of Thrones! <laughs> no, you know what happened? You know what happened? For people that don't know, so basically we're in L.A., and we're... Uh, I believe we were leaving. Yeah, we we're going to the place that was Martin something. It was actually about Martin's name in it. it and Martin's kind of Cocina. Yeah. Yeah, Martin's Cocina. I wish he was there because it would be hilarious. Yeah. But we're, we're talking, we're having a good fucking time. And at one point, somebody came up to me and asked me about Game of Thrones. He's like, hey, how come Game of Thrones is the most popular thing in the world, but season eight shot the bed? And I'm like, don't even get me fucking started. Someone hands me a drink. I'm like, you know what? Let's fucking go. Yeah. And but he, that's a really good impersonation of yourself because you're just like, oh. Hell yeah, you're in story. Oh yeah, you yeah, drink? Anyway, it's like, yeah, it was exactly like that. Oh, bro, it, 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 you just, it's like playing on the mask. Yeah, pretty one much. Of the things, <laughs> it's one of the things that, that, that it does is like, it, um, I'm very energetic, but I'm also uh, self-conscious. So whenever I'm anywhere around new people in general, I try not to be as crazy as I'd like to be. And at a party, I don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> Drinks up flowing through. I don't care. So I'm as loud as I want to be, and nobody can stop me. Yeah, which is good. But yeah, though this, this you lost your shit at, and I kind of get you. Gina and Chad saying I hated that season eight. Oh I my fucking god, don't get me started. On yeah, I didn't watch this so show, bad. but I will say when I saw some of this, uh, like beforehand, when I watched like you know individual episodes, because I had HBO, and I was like, well, since you know Game of Thrones is on, they're playing a bunch of Game of Thrones, I'm just gonna sit here and watch this shit. And every time I've done that, I've hated every single fucking episode. And I've seen stuff from season one. I've seen a couple episodes in season four. Uh, and then I saw clips from season two and three. And like the, the red hair. Or what's that shit called? The the red wedding. The red wedding. And then uh, the mountain. When the mountain uh, squishes that guy's head and shit. That was like, the only yeah. thing I liked. That, that was, that well, was, that was cool. season four. Pedro Pascal, one of my favorite actors. Yeah. Um, so that shit was kind of cool. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I absolutely hate everything I've seen from Game of Thrones. So when people are like, ooh, I hate season 8, I was kind of uh, kind of crazy. Uh, or what the, what the fuck is this? Who has been following us? Like, <laughs> I didn't even read that thing. What I know, I faster that? when you scream. I... Like, oh, Can we created, ban that uh... person too? Because yeah, that it's... does not sound like that's, yeah, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and by thing... the way, I hope someone calls me out for being overly moderating. I don't give a fuck. No, the account was created 20 minutes ago. So they're, oh, they're, they're trying bad. to do some stupid shit. Bubbles, what is up? Hopefully you're a good person. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, account created a while ago. I'm going to trust you for now. Please don't. Oh, don't, don't be God. Wait, did you guys watch The Legend of Chun-Li in the After Hours? Yes, yeah, so it was fucking awful. Why? That's like one of the worst movie adaptations of all time. Yeah. Have you met the fucking assholes in our... No, but movie? that's not like regular ha-ha <laughs> bad. That's legitimately the fucking one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Like, well, oh I... Cool. I left by the time we started watching this because the movie we were watching before this was uh, Kun Pao. Which Kun was... Pao is actually kind of funny. Fuck you. you no, it's not. It? No, it's not. But, but this is uh, this is Street Fighter Legend Chun Li. So, oh, what's so worse, bad. this or the Dragon Ball Z Evolution movie? Um, have you seen Dragon Ball Evolution? I have. I saw both in theaters. Yeah, because uh, in theaters, why the fuck? Yeah, yeah, that's why. Right. Okay, uh, Legend of Chun Li for one particular scene. Uh, Bison, to transfer his soul or some shit to be more evil, 
puts his hands together and forces his hands into a pregnant woman's belly in a cave to do something to be more evil. So yeah, Jungle Juice only is the worst movie. Oh Jesus Christ! But Bubbles, I'm saying, what's up, y'all? Hello, how you doing? They're like, I saw her on the show recently. Uh, which girl? Ooh. Uh, the girl who plays uh, Chun Li. I don't know. Actually, she was on. Uh, she was in uh, the uh, Reacher season one. Actually. Oh really? The the new yeah, Reacher. She... Yeah, the new one. Yeah, okay. she's had a country accent on for some fucking reason. But oh, yeah, I saw Jesus. her in it. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, dude, like I I, I did not like this movie because I came back and watched a couple of it when we're in the invited link or whatever. And I was like, okay, like I'm not gonna sit here and actually pay attention to this unless it's like a bit bounty or something in the future. But I, I fucking, I, I, I hate it. But Kun Pao, I really hate it. Um, and the one thing is like, there's a couple scenes that have like good like choreography and everything. But then when I brought that up, I was like, hey, they did a pretty good job with this little thing. And then somebody corrected me, either it was Tommy, Mauricio, or Ryan. But somebody corrected me and says, oh, um, actually, this is a real movie that exists. Kun Pao is just them photoshopping like a dude's face on someone. This movie is not even... They didn't even make this movie. Like, they just stole the fucking movie and just put jokes in it. And I was like, wow. Like, this is not only bad, but it's fucking stealing. Yeah, I said, I've only... Uh, I keep confusing uh, Kung Pao with a bunch of other stuff. Like, I just remember genuinely enjoying it. Yeah, it was because of a mix of just... It was really weirdly cartoony. But it was also... Yeah, the fight card. Yeah, that cow fight with the fucking... Oh, God. Bell, yes. Yeah. Uh, like, I say, oh, it's a great movie. You should watch it again. And be like, I'll watch it once. Like just yeah. just for the choreography alone. Like I, I love myself some choreography. If it's if it's if it's something that's a bit of a fun time, sure, fuck it. But yeah, yeah, this shit's so fucking. This is bright burn in I'll... the chat. Uh, what are your thoughts on Batman sidekick Robin? I heard a video essay in the defense of Robin as a character who grounds Batman and Robin, ultimately the reason why Batman grows up and becomes a responsible character. That's really really interesting, and I'm pretty sure if I went into that, Nick would just fire me on the spot. I mean, I'm going to do that anyways eventually because we're going to talk about Spider-Man. If you disagree with me, you're gone. But yeah, okay. um, answer this question, though, because I'm curious and I might have a couple things to say about it, too. But I'm really curious what you think, what, what you're uh, asking. I was actually having this discussion with my friends after we watched, walked out of the Batman uh, for, I guess, the fourth time, like the, the most recent movie. And they were discussing the future plans. And someone said, Robin. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't bring Robin in this early because Robin is a mid-tier Batman addition to the cast because... Uh, when Batman first starts off, he is trying to learn how to be both how to be Bruce Wayne and Batman, and he's struggling to balance the two. He needs to understand how to save himself and get to the point where he is okay to be Batman and Bruce Wayne, like we see in the Justice League, like we see in near the end of the Batman animated series. Robin is somebody where he understands how to balance the darkness, but he wants to save someone from going through the same struggle. This new Batman, Robert Pattinson, he he doesn't even understand how to be Bruce Wayne yet. He's Bruce Wayne like five minutes into the movie. He, he can't teach someone to balance the darkness because he can't do that. The reason he takes Robin is because Robin's family died because of crime and died right in front of him. And he doesn't want the same. He doesn't want the struggle that he went through. He takes him under his wing. He gives him a, a, a good place to live. He trains him and he helps him be a better person. But in order to do that, Batman himself has to be at least decently responsible. So that it can balance both worlds because eventually, you know, uh, Robin slash Nightwing becomes a better person, becomes a better Batman almost. When he becomes Nightwing, he's less uh, violent, he's less shadow-based, but he's still able to get the job done. Uh, but then he started to do the other Robins and he starts seeing it's like that, that Batman's becoming a mentor as he goes into old man Batman and, you know, Batman Beyond and stuff like that. But Robin, to me, is somebody that you introduce about midway through the Batman cycle to have him learn, it's like, now I have to train the next generation, because I can't do this forever. So, one thing, too, um, and this still, we're still going to be talking about Bright Bird's uh, question here and everything, too, but, like, why do you why do you know all that? Like, just very, very quick, like, five-word answer, like, just, why is it that you think you know all that stuff about Robin? Uh, I, I'm a huge Batman fan. I've been watching Batman stuff, I've been reading Batman comics really recently, and Batman's my favorite superhero of all time. Now, my answer to that um like i just i wanted to give you a chance to answer so you don't have to feel like you had to argue when i say what i'm about to say but the reason why you know that is because they did it already so that's the rule that's how he is what brightburn is essentially saying and granted like i don't know if they'll ever do this and i mean i have reasons why they shouldn't blah blah, blah but like if they did that it would be different you know what i mean like no. it wouldn't have to be something where they had to compare it to the original because you even admitted you did that with the i even saw your post about like the whole apologizing to robert pants and that was on crack yeah. i'll admit it yeah you're on crack um but the thing is though it's like the reason why because you're not the only one who did that and some people honestly i'm not even gonna blame you guys for for wanting to compare it to dark knight dark knight's one of the best movies ever so whatever but like the thing is is 
you know, the only reason why people want to do that, though, is because they feel like there's a rule that we have to keep doing the same Batman over and over again because you guys have been subjected to that happening forever, for decades, for fucking century, uh, almost a century now. So, for me, what bat, what the reason why the Batman is so amazing is the fact that it does things differently. And I'm like, those things that people might like about Batman from back in the day, why can't Robin be that person? Then we get this dynamic of like, what if Robin was trying to correct Robert Pattinson's behavior? Maybe Robin's like, hey, like, you're doing this gritty boo-hoo thing or whatever, and I'm trying, you know, I, I thought you were special. I thought you were a hero of this fucking city, but you're not. And I'm going to be the one to pull that shit out of you. You're not going to go around beating up people, potentially killing people, entering strip clubs and beating the fuck out of people. Like, you're not going to do that. We're going to save people. And that would be really cool if the young person is the one who tells a mentor that instead of the same old tired fucking same goddamn thing of the it's, mentor has to teach the young one. I, I hate that shit. Not necessarily because again, Mr. You, Miyagi. you've only really seen that maybe once. Like as far as the actual dynamic, of course, the mentor has just been around forever. Old teaches the new generation. But just because so, there's no such thing as a generic story. That is my thing. There's no such thing as a generic story. You could take the, the greatest stories of all time and you could distill them down and then put it to another movie and it's the most generic thing in the fucking world. To me, genericness is how a story is told, not what the story is. Like, for instance, uh, like, look at Terminator 2. That is almost a mentor story. It's just kind of a little different because it's actually the kid mentoring somebody else and vice versa. So, but if you took that, it's like, oh, it's somebody, it's a, it's a, it's a grizzled person learning from a kid to be whatever. It's like, okay, it's also the last of us, you know, but no one's going to sit there and say the last of us and Terminator 2 have anything in common. But if you boil down the stories, you can find a little bit but of, I don't think anyone is there. getting mentorship out of Terminator 2. There's so many no, but plots in there. He that, does, that's... Oh, true, true. But uh, a, a, a large aspect of that is John Connor. Teaching the Terminator, hey, stop fucking killing people, you crazy person. Stop doing that shit. He's teaching him to be a little bit more human over the course of that. So that is, in a way, a little bit more of a mentorship. Because he also, his mom at this point is also a Terminator too. The way she acts, the crazy shit she does. But oh, yeah, her shooting is, Dyson was fucking amazing. Yeah. yeah. And then she's crying about it and everything. Oh, dude, like, I actually teared up, like, watching that, like, ten years ago. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. But my um, thing is, like, whenever you do an interpretation, whenever you do an adaptation of a character, even if you take similar stuff, because again, I if we ever go into a long spoiler discussion of the Batman, there are a lot of there's the DNA of the Dark Knight throughout that entire movie from start to finish. But yeah. it does but what it does is it with the character, what's the character? In the Dark Knight, he was focusing on the fact that he didn't understand that criminals could be smart. To him, criminals were stupid, superstitious. That's what the Dark Knight thought uh criminals were. He deals with the Joker who's incredibly intelligent and he doesn't know how to handle that. That's why you see in the interrogation scene when he's punching him in the face and Joker's laughing at him, going, You have nothing to do with all your strength. You have nothing to threaten me with. And Batman doesn't understand that. Jump to this one. He thinks that the only way to, to save Gotham is by being vengeance. But then he starts seeing how that is more detrimental, how he needs to be better. That is, even though those movies are extremely similar, they are fundamentally different because of what the character goes through. When you have Robin being introduced, you can do exactly what you're saying. Also, did my Zoom freeze? No, no, you're good. I'm, I'm still talking okay. to you. Wait, did something no, happen? okay, my Zoom kind of froze, so I hope I didn't get that. Anyway. Oh, shit, mine um, froze too. They're now yeah. right, Zoom here. has been fucking up like crazy. So I, so I don't know. But the whole <laughs> thing is that if you want to introduce Robin in, and I'm not saying it has to be exactly like Batman and Robin. Hell, Batman and Robin is not even really a good fucking like dealing with those characters. Whatever, situation yeah. where Batman doesn't really know how to take care of people. And the first time he's becoming a mentor. Because we've never really seen Batman starting out, like maybe in a few comics or an animated short. But live action wise... We've never seen Batman start being a mentor. We've always seen him like he's mid-mentoring. He already knows what he's doing. I want to see him being a mentor just fuck up, like you said. Like, everything you said, I want to see that. I just don't want to see it right now. Really quick. So, it's starting to be a little better now. Uh, say something? I'm going to leave and come back. Yeah, leave and come back. Because it was really screwing me up a little bit here. Um, and I think... Mm -hmm. Uh, do I have... Yeah, I still have my screen showed uh, in the call. So when he comes back, you can be able to see and everything. But yeah, Gene says, if you're a chat chat, do not lie. Um, no, we uh, we do not lie here. That's the thing that gets us in trouble the most in this motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Alan's trying to get back in here. Let's see if it works. Ba -da -ba 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 -de -do. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, hopefully you're having a good time with this time about this nerdy shit, too. If you have any other questions, you guys can ask them. Throw them our way. We could actually answer that stuff pretty quickly. Alan, say something. Uh, I'm right here. I'm here also. Okay. I actually do think it is on your end, but it's not a big deal. If, if all you gotta do is leave and come back, then it's all good. Yeah, it's, it's Zoom has been honestly giving me shit. Like, even when I'm doing the Illuminati recordings, it'll just crash and die. I don't know what the problem is with it. <laughs> yeah, Brett versus people think Batman should be taken into prison for endangering the life of a minor. Stanley said that. <laughs> I don't know. 
What do you think? <laughs> uh, I was talking with Ganja and Ruthless one time, and I want to write a Batman comic. Uh, oh, gee, I... my... <laughs> no, my entire idea was that uh, the villains of Gotham would gather a lot of money to hire the best lawyer in the world to sue Batman. Uh, huh. For the constant assault, reckless endangerment of everyone's lives, uh, driving a tank on U.S. soil, which is a federal offense and might be considered as treason. So civil war. The breaking and entering. Oh, no, no, no. This isn't like the entire Justice League. They're suing Batman. Like, just Batman as the person. Not Bruce Wayne to figure out. It's like, no, no. Batman as the character, because of all the laws he's committing, instead of trying to beat him in a fight or some stupid puzzle, we're just going to get the law to go after him because, well, shit. And I just always had this idea of just something like Batman's doing his thing. And you know those servers? They're always on bikes. They always do crazy shit. Like, he's beating the shit out of a criminal. You've been served. Everyone goes, what the fuck? We're serving Batman? Basically, yeah. Batman answering your answer. I mean, yes, he is endangering a minor. Batman does illegal shit all the fucking time. Like, yeah. this man breaks the law consistently. He just doesn't kill people. That's why the police are like, look, you know what? He punches a couple people in the fucking face, but he brings them to us and we deal with the rest. But there is a constant discussion of Batman is a vigilante. He's a criminal. He just happens to be, like, not, you know, gun-toting and firing guns and murdering 40 people at night so everyone's okay with it yeah uh bubbles i feel like they just didn't want to cause more shit because i that is definitely what they wanted to do um simon says i usually put this podcast in the background but i want to say you all are doing a great job keep it up thank you asylum really appreciate oh, that dude you. um but no um so i don't know if you saw because people like when you have a shitty friend like me and you're talking about something and then like because i'm not good at hiding how i feel so i get like mad i have faces on so sometimes like i don't know if alan's looking into the zoom call when he's talking but I'm just kind of sitting here, like, nodding my head. You're always mad whenever we talk about Batman for more kind, than two seconds. Kind of, yeah. But the, uh, there's a particular reason why I'm mad today. And why, because yeah. I, I just want to explain this so you don't think that I'm mad at you. I'm more so jealous. Because we're going to talk about Spectacular Spider-Man Season 2 right now. Um, sure. This is going to be pretty much our whole show with talking about Spider-Man. The thing is, though, is I'm mad because his fucking idea. Because I was about to talk shit about, because I don't really like Alan's ideas on stories. We just That's one of the things about our friendship. We had... We, we agree and then we split every single fucking time. Like we just cannot fully agree on something. But that idea he had for his comic book is literally what I was gonna bring up about why I wish they would have done it with Spider Man. So now it's gonna look like I ripped that off of you because you fucking <laughs> said that you've come up with that. So now I'm like, man, should I even say what I think they should do with Spider Man now? Because now it's gonna look like I'm just yeah. trying to copy you. Um no, that's fine. But it's a great <laughs> idea. <I'll> take <laughs> but I will say it's a great idea. It's a really, really good idea. I just think that it would be a it would be better with another character, which we'll bring it up uh, pretty much right now. Because... It would be better with Spider-Man because you can get, like, the jokiness and you can actually kind of get that work a little better than Batman. But to me, I was always thinking, it's like, why are we just fighting the dude? Like, this man commits... Dude, You driving a tank on U.S. soil is technically treason. Especially yeah. if you're using it to harm U.S. citizens. It's actually, he's committed treason multiple times. About, is this true that Brightburn said? We're gonna... Okay. I, 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 and by the way, like, I'll try my best to interact a lot when we get into our uh, big review. But if I start skipping over certain things you say, um, just know it's because, you know, I want to be able to get the review out and then, you know, you guys can go enjoy Corey. Because I want you guys to be able to hear, you know, what we think about this show. But the last thing I will read over here, unless it's bit really, if you guys send bits, I'll make sure to respond. But he says, Superman, even in the uh, anime series, says, I don't want vi uh, vigilantism in my town. Is that true? Because uh, yes. that's kind of crazy. He, he is a vigilante himself. So why would he be saying that? That, that That's like really dumb. <laughs> it, okay. It's... Fuck. It's a this. It's a. I'm trying to get my thoughts in. Yeah, right I'll, now. I'll I'll pretty much say, um, what I think about yeah, that while you get your thoughts out. But it's like for me, what I think is like not only the obvious bit of it of like, oh no, you are a vigilante, and you're saying that like I want a vigilanteism in my fucking shit, whatever the fuck. Um, I could totally understand, you know, that that's like a thing where, uh, you know, like it's uh hypocritical, whatever. But my other thing is is like your town. You, your town is the world. So, like, there's not, it's not just Batman. You got fucking Green Lantern. You got Wonder Woman. You got all these people. Why don't you go fuck with them? Like, we've always had this Batman v Superman thing. But, like, Superman should have a problem with fucking everybody because of this. And he doesn't. It's like, is he, are you scared of everybody else? What, what the fuck? No, because he could, he, he's not as scared. But the way, <laughs> Sorry. the way Superman views himself is he views himself as a person on this planet. He doesn't view himself as a god. He doesn't view himself as a necessarily even a protector. He's a 
for he's a person on this planet and he wants this planet to embody the best and the the best of people which is why superman constantly like he will because he's able to he will do news interviews he will speak with the police in broad daylight he will talk to the people so to him he isn't necessarily he believes he's not taking the laws of his own hand he's working within the confines of law and working with the police working with the lawmakers working with the president and uh, that's why they that's why batman's always you know he's always called the boy scout Superman's always called the boy scout because he's essentially almost a member especially in the the, the frank miller's dark knight returns he uh he is uh works for the united states government to solve problems around the world so to him he's not a vigilante because he is actually working with the law now batman kind of does that but batman, batman's more a situation where the law just kind of looks away because he's still doing their job and gordon really deals with it but batman's really a consultant even to the justice like he's actually it, the, the 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 largest technicality i could possibly fucking make he is technically not a justice league member and he said this myself himself he like i i'm not part of the fucking justice league i'm just a consultant because i fucking can't stand half you people but also if i don't keep an eye on you idiots you'll blow up half the planet so we just kind of there to keep everyone to make sure that if something happens you can at least be there to help but to him he's always worked outside the law he's always worked within the shadows because guess what He's not a lantern. He can't take bullets. He's not Wonder Woman. He doesn't have Amazonian god powers. He's not Superman. He is a regular dude, which means he cannot do public interviews. He cannot do any of this stuff. All of this stuff has to be fear-related. Superman hates that because that's the worst of humanity. The fear, the violence, the cruelty, that's the worst of humanity. Where Superman wants to body the best of it. So he sees himself, he is not like Batman. He is different, and he doesn't really like Batman because Batman inspires other people to do so. Because he's a regular person... He inspires other people to just pick up a gun and start going, and now you're dealing with a hundred Batmans or Punishers or whatever you want to call it. So I understand. Well, yeah, and that does why happen Dark Knight too. The beginning, like, yeah, you're right. Uh, exactly. That, that was a problem instantaneously. It, problem. The second movie, the guys gunning people down, and even uh, you know, Alfred is like, "Oh, you want to inspire people?" Batman's like, "Not like that. Not like that. That's not what I wanted." And Superman doesn't want that to happen. Because he wants to be there. He wants to be the protector for everybody. Even if he doesn't consider himself that way, he wants to be the one to be able to help instead of just a bunch of other people. That's why he doesn't really bother Green Lantern too much because Green Lantern doesn't really focus a lot on... Like, he focuses on Earth, but his, his he has an entire squadron. It's basically he's a cop. Green Lantern is a cop, and the solar, the Milky, uh, the solar system we're in is kind of his purview and a couple other sectors. He mostly hangs out on Earth because, let's be real, a lot of shit happens on Earth, so... <laughs> Probably get to park your car where all the shit happens. Yeah, okay. Well, shit. I mean, that answers that. You know, in the chat, they're saying that uh, Golden Age Superman didn't give a fuck, which is cool. But then at the same time, too, I can understand yeah. why it's a storyline device. Essentially, him complaining, like, hey, I want a vigilante in my shirt. Get the out. I want you out. Why on me before the sun goes down? You know, actually, in, in, uh, in more, more often than not, Superman respects Batman. It's Batman that has to learn to respect Superman. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're an alien piece of shit. I hate illegal aliens. I'm Batman. <laughs> yeah, no, for him, you could destroy the entire world with a pinky. One of my favorite uh, comic strips, I think it was out of, uh, I think it was out of World's Finest. And it was just basically both Batman and Superman just kind of talking and respecting each other, where it's like, Batman's like, that man saw a Holocaust on his planet and chose to be good. Like, he chose <laughs> to be good. He could have done, he could have destroyed this entire planet, but he chooses not to because fundamentally he's a good person. And Batman goes, fundamentally, I'm not. Like, he respect that, but that's after, like, decades of working together. So it's like, he has to learn to respect Superman because he's afraid of him. Who is it? Who, how are you not afraid of Superman? You yeah, know? I know. And it's, it's a scary thing. It's like, yeah, one day he just feels like fucking with us and then we're fucked. Let me see. I just heard a notification wondering if that's Corey. Uh, let me see. Put my pin code in. I'm oh, in. yo. What? Who posted that in the chat? Who posted that? Bubbles in the chat. That is my favorite Batman thing of, like, in the entire Justice League show. It is really fucking good. So play it. It's 30 seconds of play. Play. It's really fucking good. Alright, I see. Really quick. Play it yeah. That may you want me to what? Turn yourself over into U.S. custody, along with the rest of us. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Meet us at the coordinates I'm sending first. We should all go over together. This is the single dumbest plan I've ever heard. <laughs> if you're feeling guilty, clear your own name. Don't stand on the sidelines waiting for somebody else to do it. We've already voted. Five in favor. Six. You have to come with us, Bruce. I don't have to do anything. No, fuck, I don't. I'm a part-timer, yeah. remember? <laughs> yeah, like, fuck you guys. Actually, he took it a lot better than I'd expected. 
No, honestly, you no, fuck the Justice what? League. You yeah, guys are yeah, assholes. Fuck the Justice League, kind of, a little. Yeah, no, that, that's bullshit. <laughs> like, all of you, and then Flash had to go in there, uh, me too. Hey, don't worry, dude, um, you've already been outvoted, just shut your stupid fucking mouth, alright? He just had to, he just had to come out there and say, also, I also betrayed Batman too, bitch. Yeah. No, I love that shit, because, like, uh, but that happens like a couple of times in animated shows where it just looks like, hey, we gotta take responsibility for some of it. Ben is like, I'm out. Like, yeah, but how about <laughs> have all the shit they fucking did? I, I can't believe Superman is motherfucker saying, well, we need to put you in or whatever. Dude, how many buildings have you fucking destroyed with your big yeah, stupid Man is still a thing? thousand, but like Batman, uh, not Batman, Superman tends to. He tends to fly up. He wants to get people out of the city. It's more of Zack Snyder's Superman that said fuck it to destruction, but. The thing is, is that that clip fundamentally shows, like, the Justice League are good people because they're like, mm -hmm. hey, we're going to go in and we're going to pay for our crimes. That's a good thing. Good person thing. Batman's like, fuck you. I'll prove myself because Batman, like, fundamentally doesn't believe he's a good person. So he's like, look, I'm going to be guilty for something, but I'm not guilty for this. I'm going to prove myself innocent so I can continue doing what I'm doing. Because to him, the law doesn't matter. The law changes. It does not matter to him. The only thing is his own personal code, which is I won't kill people. Let me see what this is really quick. Gene said to play this. I'm going to I'm gonna trust him. Let's see really quick. Uh, Let's see what I, can I tried do. to start this off on my end, but nah. right, let's see. So it'll be quiet for you, Alan. Me in. What happened to this nigga out there? Got knocked out like a little bitch, nigga. Oh. I told you. Oh. I was <laughs> nigga. Let's, let's, let's <laughs> see, nigga. Nigga, put some respect on my name. Batman, chill out, man. We just trying to help you, bro. No, nah, man, fuck you. Nigga. Keep your rich ass in the house. Out of your bullshit, Superman. What's up, nigga? <laughs> hey, nigga stay down. Fuck, knock you the fuck down, nigga. This ain't what you want. Oh God. Okay, honestly, I want that. I man, I want that as a show. <laughs> Well, you want Chris Tucker to be yes. fucking Batman? I want, I, no, because you know what the fucking thing is? This is more realistic than the show. I know it's a joke, but this is fucking way better than what they were actually saying. No. And it actually no, it fits wasn't. the character a little bit. It, actually it does it at all. And it oh, dude. Form. The Batman if calling the Flash out Superman? Became, if the Flash and Batman changed, like, mine, sure. But, like, no, Batman, look, Batman yeah. doesn't sit there and go, oh, I'm the best. He goes, no, I know I'm going to get shot. Jesus fucking Christ, I know I'm gonna die. No, but he's but like, he's like, wait, why are you on my ass? Like, you better fucking help me out, motherfucker. You left me out there like, to get fucking hurt, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, that's... Like, I know it's just some funny shit, but legit, like, if this was a show, dude, like, I'm fucking so for it, bro. You need to do nah, that. fuck that shit. Batman knows what he's doing. Because they kind of do a Holly Quinn show. They, they have moments like this. Oh, uh, God. I fucking can't stand that fucking show. Oh, you're a bitch, I dude. watched one episode. So you oh, rather, so you'd rather have Harley Quinn be, oh, Mr. J, psh, psh, shut up, bitch. How dare you have lines? Like, you rather no, have that instead? No, actually, and honestly, I can't stand Harley Quinn's character, and I never liked her. Well, they do her good this time. Sure. Just you know what I want? I want more of the Batman. God damn, like, enough? You only, you no. only fit so much bat dick in your fucking mouth. Uh, I don't know. I, I gotta watch it one or two more times before it gets out of theaters. Fuck you. Are you? Are you gonna are you gonna watch it two more times? Yeah, at least once. I, uh, like, I like you do know movie. Batman doesn't know, because he's not real. You know Batman doesn't know real to me, that you're God watching all these movies. Same thing with the rest well, of hey, me. Hey, 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 well, you know Stone Cold doesn't give a shit that you're watching. He do, I thought he knew. He does, though. It's okay, baby. I love Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> People chat. Hey, is it weird that I like Stone Cold Steve Austin so much? Does anyone else love him as much as I do? He's going to be returning no, to WrestleMania. Dude. It's a whole thing. No, I, Nobody by loves way, him as much as you do. Also, dude, last week, it was 316 day. I didn't even say shit about it, dude. I didn't say I was going to do a whole Stone Cold show. I was going to do a whole fucking, like, I didn't, top... I don't follow your Facebook, so I don't know if you did it or not. Yeah, there goes the curl. What? Yeah, dude. Fucking Stone Cold's the best superhero. <laughs> My favorite anime character is Stone Cold Steve Austin. I mean, yeah, I'm not surprised. So yeah, let me like my Batman. You can like your own fictional character. <laughs> Ryan's like, nobody crawl bars and impersonation like you. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's how all impersonations are. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. Fucking. Well, I, be like, you know what? I want to hear an interpretation. Go. Yeah, here, here's another uh, impersonation. Uh, Lassie and Rassie. Hey, Ryan, why don't you go fuck yourself? Anyways, that's an examiner, by the way. Have you seen those? Examiner. I'm surprised you don't know what that is, but no, it checks your uh, your pulse and everything. So I, I just did oh. this, <laughs> fucking idiot. No, but like you you point any finger you want, but essentially it checks your heart rate and then also it checks your oxygen. Oh, don't put it on your thumb though, because your thumb has its own individual beat. You have to put it on the uh, middle ones. Oh, really? Okay, I put it on my middle or my uh, index yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one to put it on. Mostly because it's really designed for like one of those two fingers. But your own, uh, that's why whenever you check your pulse, you always go for your wrist. You never check your thumb because your thumb also has some sort of like, it reverberates, it throws it off. So you always have to check yeah. uh, two places. Which is, I'm glad you told me that because I probably wouldn't know. Um, I used to be able to count my own heartbeat, but I forgot the mathematics. I forgot it too, and I stopped giving a shit. Well, it's important for like when you're, I, I'm, 
I know I'm so fat, people, before you guys start talking shit. I know I'm fat. But, like, fucking, uh, when, I, when I worked out a lot, and I still do, it's very, very important that if you want to burn fat, don't go above 120 uh, heartbeats per second. Or, or, yeah, don't go above because if you do that, you're burning sugars, burning energy, and you're building muscle. And they want you to be between 100 and 120, so you trick your body after the 12th minute to start burning fat. Um, stubborn fat. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so checking your heart rate is extremely important. Just so you guys know, anyone who's overweight in the chat and you're trying to lose weight, sometimes you guys will bust your ass, you'll see results, is because you're wearing yourself out and you're adding muscle onto the fat, which is making you heavier, not lighter. So, well, yeah, yeah, because the, the scale itself is like is one thing, but like that's why to me it's like right now it's like I'm kind of doing a mix of not necessarily toning out, but just trying to build enough because muscle, uh, because muscle will weigh you down more, but it also will burn stubborn fat. Mm -hmm. Like it also burn fat as well. So if you're doing a mix, like you can't out, you can't run off fucking 300 pounds. Like you gotta fucking even out a way. I'm building a little bit won't kill you. So you gotta, you have to do a mix. You can't just do oh yeah yeah for all sure. cardio all the time. So to me, it's like I do a mix. I do a little bit of cardio, do a little bit of weightlifting, a little bit of stretches, a little bit of just toning out. So it's like I can just even out. You know. Yeah. Um. Bubbles in the chat. That's fucking perfect like swimming swimming would be literally perfect i wish oh I had yeah if, but, yeah. i mean yeah we're not rich and white enough to just own a pool well no but the fucking broke my sister is broke fucking all the goddamn time but she has an apartment and they have a pool but we don't go because we're all very uh social I, anxious. Aren't most social. Aren't most pools probably closed because of covid no they're oh, no they were like oh hey guys got nothing to do bring your disease in the pool and kill each other off Stupid fucking state. Uh, sorry. I do got to find a gym, though, because I, I, I got decent enough stuff there, but I wouldn't mind well, getting Well, with you driving and shit, you'll be able to go over there and fucking... That's... I never... I don't know why I never connected that. Yeah. <laughs> I, did you know driving can get you places? Wow, that's news to me. Yeah. Well, no, but you know what my dumbass did? What? I was going to get a uh, a Planet Fitness thing, and it's like two miles away, and I was like, God, I, I don't, I don't want to go over there because I have to walk over there. It's like, that's part of the workout. <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I want to skip walking <laughs> somewhere so I can go to somewhere to walk. And Here, run. Nick, I'll pick you up. <laughs> yeah, like, you, you know, well, while you're doing it, can you lift the weights for me too, Alan? <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Well, I'll just sit here and eat and watch you. They're heavy, I know. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, dude. Do you think? Okay, this is the last thing before we get into What's the Spider-Man review. But this is a chat yeah. attack. We we just we're all over the place. This and is the tangent attack. That. Exactly, yeah. And the thing is, this is one of the reasons why I actually like our podcast nowadays, at least, is because we'll have topics and everything, and we'll get to them. But I love just literally just shooting the shit, like as if you were in the fucking house with me right here and just blowing me, you know? Um, anyways, what? so, <laughs> but um, the thing is, though, is uh, I've always thought about this because there was a commercial I did this, and it was like a joke, but I'm like, that would be so fucking good. Um, there was a commercial of this dude who's old, and he's wired to all these things, like in his arms and shit, and his biceps is like, boom, boom, boom. And you're like, how? why is it doing that? And there's a big tough guy who's working out, but the wires and all the strength is connected to him through veins. So the dude's working out what? for him. And the old dude's just sitting down doing nothing, like eating potato chips while the guy's working out. And it was like, dude, like that's huh. actually kind of cool. Like, Do you think they can ever make something like that where someone can work out for you while you just sit there with your fat ass just like doing nothing? No. Well, you could always strap yourself into the machine and it would do it for you. But the problem with that is uh okay let's say you're just doing simply like a uh, arm you know you're just getting the dumbbell back and forth in theory you could put your arm in there and you would not be able to deal with that but the problem is you'd still feel the pain mm -hmm. you'd still feel the exhaustion it's just a situation where if you wouldn't be able to puss out <laughs> yeah. it was too heavy no we actually calibrated this exactly you're you're good you're just being a little bitch that's the only thing I and the worst thing I, I even hate like because I, I had a coach once and i lost a lot of weight but the problem is is like the coach was constantly telling me like, no, no, you did this much last week. You can do it this week. Numerically, you're lying right now. You are lying. I'm like, maybe I chatted off too much last night. Like, just, I'm sore. Why would I lie? I came here to work out, to lose weight. It fucking yeah. hurts. Like, let, give me a day where I can chill a little bit. Fuck. Yeah, I've been finding it really weird because I've been trying to like continue my regular sets, but I f I'm finding it more difficult to do so. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Mm, yeah, I, probably a bad thing, but. It at the I same time, like, your body's going to... well enough to do it. Yeah, yeah, that can easily be a thing. Um, but, yeah, anyways, well, we'll get into the reviews and everything, too. I know you sent me something. I, I watched it while he was talking, and I just... I don't know the joke. Yeah, now so. That's, like, half the movie. That's, like, too much of the movie, and I don't like the joke, so... Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, but, anyways, moving on, though, people. Um, good old Spider-Man. And I got to tell you, dude, I love the way this fucking thing starts off, bro. I love it. 
it's fucking so badass. I mean, it basically starts out yeah. with Venom and, and it, there's like this uh, like a nightmare that he's having. We don't know it's a nightmare yet, but Venom's showing his face again. I'm like, fuck yeah, like they decide to go back to it, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, you, you Peter Parker wakes up and it was just a dream. And essentially, they kind of do a pretty good job by like, just kind of reintroducing you to the characters. Because for me, when I watch so much stuff, I forget like yeah. the characters' names and, and their aliases or whatever the case may be. And here, they do like a casting call, essentially, of like, hey, let me write down my friend's like names and shit. Like, I got a list of all my buddies I want to go over here. And then I got to like talk to uh, Gwen Stacy and hopefully Liz is a mind. You know, like, it's all crazy. And I was like, I like that because it was one of those situations where, you know, it's exposition, yes, but it's so quick. And it's also so unimportant. And yet, like, in real life, I would include all my friends' names when I'm planning. Like, hey, I gotta go somewhere with Allie. I know Alan's gonna come over here with me. And then, oh, Jet. And then, blah, blah, blah. like, I can, you can know who my friends are by just one sentence. Because um, we do that sometimes on a show. Like, hey, we're watching this movie with Gondra, blah, 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 and we got a casting call. Um, but yeah, the way it started off for you, man, what'd you think? Uh, I was immediately, because I uh, watched it two weeks ago, and immediately they just jumped right into more symbiote. So I'm like, okay, okay. I really like how the show handles the symbiote. It's probably one of the best, the best interpretations, including like for me. Uh, before No Way Home came out, I was like, clicking my head like, announcing Peter Parker Spider Man is the stupidest fucking thing because like twelve people in New York know who Peter Parker is. So this idea of revealing who Spider Man is means really nothing to nobody, <laughs> and you can easily like say, oh, it's not me. Yeah. And they do that within the first couple episodes. Hell, they dealt that shit in fifteen minutes, shorter than the fucking movie did. And they're, yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely no proof. This kid, everyone thinks he's an idiot. And they ask everybody around, like, do you think he's him? And then everyone's like, no. And they, they immediately just wrap it up. But I like that out Venom. It's like, look, man, I'm going to fuck with you in ways that will destroy you. I don't need to kill you. I'll make sure other people do so. And I really like that he was still finding a way to, you know, attack him emotionally, much like the ending of season one. It was really, really well done. Yeah, but then, you know, we get into the situation, too, while they're introducing Mysterio and they're giving us, like, a look at, like, you know, the friends and everything, giving us a little bit of a, not necessarily, like, a flashback, but they're, like, wrapping things up because they brought up Venom right away, too. So now Venom's going to be on our head the entire time. And yeah. then also they give us a Stan Lee cameo, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, so, nice. like, you know, they're, they're kind of, like, uh, doing, like, a bullet list of, like, you know, we're checking off things. People want Stan Lee, boom, we got them. People want the Venom stuff because of season one, we got it. People want Cassie Call, want to be reminded what's going on, boom. And we introduce a new character. It's like, damn, like, you're busy. Like, fuck yeah, yeah. dude. Like, congratulations on just getting so much shit done. But now I'm going to get into Nick Diaz mode. I'm sorry. Mysterio is fucking trash in this. Like, he is He always is awful. trash. I fucking hate Mysterio. Mysterio is the Riddler of the fucking Spider-Man mythos. He is the biggest loser in the entire rogues gallery and a character that has one of the most famous rogues galleries of all fucking time. I can't fucking stand uh, Mysterio. I'll say Mauricio. Jesus Christ. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, fuck, fuck Mauricio too, you bitch. No. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's always, like, to me, it's always the same thing. Of, Look at me. I have all these special effects and I talk extra. And I'm like, in yeah. a world with literal aliens, actual magic, like, spider powers and fucking... And he's doing magician shit too. Like, he's like, oh, I'm gonna, like... Make, make people believe in my bullshit and it's like is this like this isn't that villainous like to be honest oh no too. holograms yeah like and our our fucking on the daily bugle every day spider-man sends a motherfucker to the sky and then he's covered in webs and he's like sticking to city skylines like th there's a lot more amazing shit than mysterio bro like, even yeah. in the first episode of season one, we get the vulture. A fucking dude who's dressed like a vulture chasing after it's a Spider-Man. with metal and shit. Yeah. But, but as much as I hate Mysterio, I did like how that episode focused on him training his spider sense. Yeah. Like, that was what made it work. Much like Far From Home. As much as I fucking hate Far From Home. And I don't, I don't think it's the worst Spider-Man movie. I'm not crazy. Both Amazing Spider-Mans are worse. The only sequence that I, you know, the only thing I really like about it is like, yeah, they call the Peter thing, which made me fucking, you know, yeah. lose my mind. But they were, he was learning how to really utilize it, even in uh, No Way Home. I love that scene where he's just yeah. like, the spider sense is going off, and he, and he's asking, hey, Peter, what's wrong? I don't know, but the the script's telling me there's something wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. like that's what the spider sense should be. Should be almost a script telling him, hey, some shit's about to happen. And they do it really well here. You know, he covers his eyes and he has his own daredevil fucking mode. Are we good? Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, what, was something happening with Zoom? No, no, just seeing... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The, uh, oh, I'm sorry, DT. I, I forgot that I'm showing the screen there, but I was looking to see if DT... Uh... What was good here, but they, they still haven't. So sorry, guys. Uh, I would call Corey right now, but we're doing a review. Um, as soon as the review is I mean, over, we'll we'll find other topics. 
and then while we're doing topics, I'll call him. Right? Or okay. should I just do it now? Uh, it's up to you. I can always talk for more, but I know you want to talk about Spider-Man as well. So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll just do this, and then when Corey calls, whatever. But, like, just so you guys know, as you guys just saw, I'm checking on for you guys. Like, because <laughs> I don't want you guys being, like, just waiting, like, all right, like, Spider-Man's cool, but where the fuck is Corey? <laughs> like, I'm looking too, guys. I'm looking out for y'all. Um, yeah, he'll call me interrupting again. <laughs> yeah, course. pretty much. Um, but, yeah, but I'll put back on the Spider-Man thing here for now. Uh, the, yeah, like... I, I, I like that too. I like that, you know, he's kind of practicing the spider tingle or spider sense, whatever. And I love what, the way they do that in No Way Home where, or in Infinity War too because remember that big rain kind of like opens up that portal and like he, he just he comes out of the bus. He's like, what the fuck is that? And his hair is... That was trash. I'll, I'll be real. That was uh, trash. I like Dude, it. the entire city saw that! And then he's just like, well, huh. Wow, oh no, a gigantic space alien monster. Huh. That's well, neat. Well, what if it happens in like two seconds though? Like maybe that wasn't just sitting there. Maybe just it barely happened and then he felt it like instantly. You know, he's like, Oh, what the fuck was that? Like, you know what I mean? No. Okay. It was better in it was better in No Way Home. Okay. That was the best use of the spider sense. Because he's still though. young yeah. and learning it. Mm -hmm. Hell, actually there's an even better uh, thing in that same movie. It's at the very start where he's in there and the brick comes through the window and you know, dude catches it. But you also see Spider Man's hand like there as well, because he would have caught it too. So yeah. that's a really good interpretation. It's like and the only reason is because the character in there, and I, I don't want to spoil it. I know the Blu ray is about to come out. I'm going to try because I know there's at least one motherfucker that hasn't watched it yet for some fucking reason. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, like, you see, like, because again, the character there is older, so he's had his sense for a lot longer than Peter has. So it makes sense that he's still learning it. And that's why I want to see a more mature, like, a PS4 Spider Man where it's like he's been doing this for a couple of years because I want to see how well the spider sense will go. Yeah, no, um, and me too, and I will say that, like, it's unfortunate there isn't a season three to this, because this Spider-Man was interesting, and the way they did certain things, like we're talking about right now, I was like, this shit's pretty cool, but yeah. it's just unfortunate that it's probably not going to continue on, so I don't know. I, I, well, I mean, it's yeah, for sure yeah. not going to continue on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, um, unless, like, if, let me know, people, in the chat, but, like, if there's, like, another, like, Spider-Man that is not called Spectacular Spider-Man, but they take this version and continue on stories, let me know, because that could be uh... cool. Nick, there's something you need to know about Spider-Man shows. They've gone significantly worse. And I don't mean, eh, it's uh, not as good. I mean, eight, nine shows this season to two. Uh, like, okay. like, think about the worst season of The Walking Dead. Imagine the worst <laughs> season of The Walking Dead right after the best season of The Walking Dead. Yeah, that's it, it, it was. Uh, I think Ultimate Spider-Man comes out afterwards. And so, oh my fucking God. It is legitimately the worst. It is like that old, it's like Daria... But you have, like, the most annoying character, and it's Peter Parker, who literally never shuts up. I watched 20 minutes, and I don't think the character was not talking the entire time. He's 20 minutes nonstop. <laughs> like, no breaths at all. And the most, the worst jokes, the most annoying things in the world, constantly breaking the fourth wall. It was not oh, like good. Dead, like Deadpool? Like, honestly, as bad as Deadpool, if not oh, worse. Jesus Christ. Uh, just here, and, and by the way, I don't want to watch that, so please don't bit bounty for this. But just to let you guys know, 1,500 bits is what we'll take for for a season of a show, any show. You just send that over to us, and then we'll literally add that to our long <laughs> please list. Please don't make me watch Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. Lucario had a good point. We should watch some Batman cartoons from the fucking 2000s. Yeah. I'll watch Batman Beyond. <laughs> but yeah, 500 bits for a movie, 1,500 for a season of a show. Um, but yeah, I will say, though, Peter's continual questionable character choices kind of got my nerves in this. Like, uh, Bro, yeah, bro like, I was screaming. Peter Parker's a shallow piece of shit that doesn't deserve so a single much. woman in his life. He, yeah, he does not deserve any, like, I don't know, oh, like, like, literally almost like villain shit. Like, literally, this is like a fucking, like, um, what was that shit about high school, like, the president's, uh, Clone High or whatever? Yeah, 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 Clone High. Peter yeah. Parker from here should be in that fucking show. Because it's like, <laughs> he's literally that bad. He fucking sucks. So, so, he is, the start, the, the conflict of the show at the start off is him and Ben Quist in season one, and he's, like, not really sure how he feels. He doesn't know how to talk to her, and that happens. We, we've all been young. We're attracted to a friend. We don't know how to talk to them, so it's a little awkward. Yeah. But then another girl he's interested in as well actually, like, you know, shoots her shot and gets. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to try my luck because, you know what? I maybe have feelings. I'm like, oh, that's fair. Sometimes maybe you have conflicting feelings amongst friends. You don't really know where to go. He goes and he goes with this. The problem is, and this is me yelling at the fucking screen, every single time Gwen's on screen and his girlfriend's there, oh, oh hey, Gwen. And every single time, like, Gwen is, like, trying to live her life. She's not sure she wants to be with Harry. He's jealous that he's not with Gwen. But he's currently has a girlfriend that he doesn't give a fuck of flying fuck about yeah. at any time. He constantly gets distracted by every other woman that shows by. And it's yeah. like, you are such a shallow piece of shit. 
And the worst part about this, by the way, too, is like, I fucking hate. I'm actually going through something like this right now in real life with another friend of mine. Oh! Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God I got scared. Oh, my God. <laughs> right. um, well, what you call it? Um, that's only 500 bits, so I'll do a movie. But they're like, yeah, um, I, I can't do a, what you call it, a season for only 500 bits, man. 1,500 will be the thing uh, for that. But um, if you got a movie, LaCurl, make sure to write that down in the chat. We'll definitely do that. Because I tend to review Batman Season 1 and Season 3. Um, but yeah, man. Um, what you call it? If you throw another, uh, what you call it? <laughs> I'm trying to do the math. 1,000. Yeah, another 1,000 bits. Then uh, we'll definitely do uh, Season 1. And we'll do it in order, too. So like if somebody else comes in and throws bits in that way, then we'll do Season 2 and then Season 3, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But, um... Yeah, dude, so, like, the whole situation... And thank you very much for that, by the way. Like, you are Yeah, the thank shit. you so much. Yeah, and if you're unable to do those bits or whatever, or do more, um, then listen to the movie, and we'll do the movie. Because um, I'm down for that, too. Uh, no matter what. I'm, oh, actually, I'm saying we're down, but it's like, whatever you guys put there, we gotta do it. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, I ain't got no God. choice. Trust um, me, there's some garbage-ass movies out there. I'm still mad at the Watch T-Tens Go. Yeah, fuck you, Eddie! Yeah, you're an asshole. Uh, you're wrong. The movie uh, sucks. <laughs> but the Gwen and Liz thing was kind of annoying to me, but then it got to a certain point where I was like, okay, well, now this is becoming like the most interesting thing because we get, like, that second episode, dude, we, we see Craven the Hunter. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh shit. We... <laughs> that was Cardi B playing, by Batman, the way. Batman, damn it. Okay, I mean, yeah, why not? Fuck it. I'm getting some, uh, my schedule's freeing up, so we'll try to watch it. Uh, it's yeah, a, very first soon, season, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Batman the Anime Series, correct? Yeah. All right. I mean, again, it's one of the one of the greatest animated series of all time. So. Yeah, I haven't seen it in so long. I watched this when it was brand new when I was a kid, and I Same. fucking I fucking loved it. I loved it. But it the did, problem is the reason I love Batman. Like the Batman Beyond yeah. really fucking shot it up, but like I Batman the Animated Series, and then for me, Batman Beyond's a little bit better. Well, here's the thing about this too is like the reason why I'm so hyped to watch this again is because I don't remember a lot of it, but then also too like. I've loved stuff like, for instance, Dark Knight. I fucking loved the Dark Knight, and then yeah. the more like time passed, I was like, I, I don't like this fucking movie no more. <laughs> so I'm curious, like, am I gonna be the guy who comes on here like an asshole and everyone gets mad at me when I talk about Batman anime series and they're like, hey, like, yes. what the fuck? Well, who knows? We'll see. I, I want to piss anybody off beforehand, but I'm gonna be completely honest. Though, if I don't like it, I'm gonna tell you guys I don't like it. Oh, we know. And me now, I'm gonna fight so fucking bad over that. Hey, man, <laughs> I I still think like look, I'll say I'll say advice. I don't think the digging in my review is Spectacular Spider-Man. I still think the '90s Spider-Man is better. Yeah, uh, Gene's like, yes, we know, <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> um, but yeah, dude. I mean, I'm gonna ask you a question really quick though, because another okay. issue, like I said, is like, wh where the fuck is Venom? Like, I was on episode two or maybe three. There was no Venom. And I'm like, okay, this is annoying, and these characters are adding on, even though it's impressive that they're, once again, like, this writer is having to do these obligations, and, like, we gotta tell this story, we gotta tell that story, we gotta tell this story. But, like, okay, there's no Venom, but you did allude that he's gonna be somehow in this. But you give me shit like Craven the Hunter, and, like, before Craven even has... I actually like the Craven the Hunter, too. Well, but here's the thing, though. It's like, he, before his evolution, he's being the fuck up Peter Parker, or, or, or Spider-Man, I, I mean. And it's like, I thought Spider-Man was a shit. He fought... The Sandman. He fought Electro. He fought Riot he, or um, Rhino. Everybody. Vulture. You having a tr you having problems with Craven the fucking hunter? So so uh, what is every except for Craven? What does every single villain you have in common? What does every single villain you list have in common? They don't know who Spider Man is, and they don't they can't they they, they, are, they don't know he's Peter Parker. Whereas no, no, no. what? They're all idiots. <laughs> Craven's They're a all fucking dumb. idiot too. He literally took no, a No, Craven is incredibly oh, yeah. like. Oh no no! But again, what do we see before this man takes down a rhino? This guy is like really like he's a paramilitary. He knows how to handle animals. He knows how to track prey. He is a highly trained individual. Spider Man has again doesn't fight highly trained individuals ever. This is really the first time he's fought someone that actually has any sort of training. But he still he still manages to kick his ass. That's why he goes and gets you know fucking you know uh we need plot serum to make sure whatever it can be but he has trouble with it but he still manages to beat him the reason he's losing is because he's fighting somebody that's prepared he's never like rhino just shows up and starts running like whatever i'll just i'll lead him into a gas thing explodes with who i save the day vulture's an old man so it's like what the fuck's he gonna do mm -hmm. sandman it's like sandman's a fucking idiot i'll just fake water on him and he'll he'll melt like i can beat those people really easily craven the hunter is someone that's in, uh, exceptionally trained to hunt down and fight you know uh animals like you know cheetahs and tigers and rhinos and shit like that and and spider-man has animalistic instincts because he has spider bites so he's a little bit different than human probably closer to an animal that's why he's able to track him down and fight oh, him sorry, and do really really well up, uh... 
the no, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, but I actually really good. like that because I'm like, he's not going to be able to like beat him every single time. But the first time, it's like, yeah, Spider Man had trouble with him and then kicked his ass. And then, you know, he's like, oh shit, I need fucking Spider Man powers. And he gets it and he becomes even more of a fucking threat that Spider Man has even more trouble dealing with. Yeah, Il Crow says Craven was robbed out of a spot for Spider Man No Way Home. You know, yeah, you're probably right. That was about the original that. villain. Yeah, I did not know that. That's actually kind of cool. Like, I would have liked to see that. I also would like to see Hammerhead, not necessarily No Way Home, but in some other Marvel movie. And we'll get into that later on. But, like, yeah. you know, as far as, like, how serious these Sinister Six characters, especially from the first season who carried over to the second season, um, considering how serious they can be, and I feel, like, somewhat service level, except for some of the voice acting, I really disliked people like Silver Wolf or whatever and, and Hammerhead. I was like, yeah, this is fucking stupid. Like, this is dumb. I actually uh, still yeah. like Hammerhead and Silver Sable. Yeah, I, I was just like, come on, dude. Like that. No, because Hammerhead is a really cool thing where he betrays, uh, he's betraying somebody and sets it up in the fucking best way. He's like, here you go, boss. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, I love that shit because that's some like, for like a, like 10 minutes in this random kids show, we're just doing The Sopranos. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> loved it. Literally have opera music as all this bullshit's happening, but... I yeah. like is that they take their... This is a kid's show, but it does say, oh, we got to be stupid and funny. They have those moments. Of course they do. They have the comedy moments. But then they're like, you know, hey, Doc Ock is like this incredibly, like, very serious villain who has a, a lot going on and he's very, like, focused. I'm like, yo, this is really, really fucking good character development for these characters. Yeah, um, the biggest thing, and I... Uh, let me see. Uh, <laughs> I just got a message for somebody. So my bad, y'all. I guess my notifications things didn't actually mute. <laughs> it just scared me. I was like, "Oh fuck!" Um, Look, yes, amateur know? mastermind. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and they're <laughs> they're not the impractical jokers. They're practical with their inconsistencies. So I think Corey, keep in mind, Corey has a lot of internet issues going on. So it's like the fact that he's even gonna be able to do a show is uh, amazing to me. Hopefully, they're in a new studio. I don't know if that's the case. Maybe that would add like a lot of time to get ready. Um, I haven't talked to Corey at all all weekend, so. Just please, people, pray for Coleman, please. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, another thing, too, is, like, I know you guys don't want to watch this the entire time and everything as well. But, you know, just so you guys know, if you're coming to our chat, shoot the shit with us. We'll make sure to keep you busy, whatever, so you don't know us all the time that you're waiting. Um, one character I liked here. Well, first, the, I wanted to ask you a question, actually. Um, What's up? You know, those villains, do you feel like, like, did you feel the absence of Venom like I did? Because I felt that, and no. I was like, I can't. I'm getting irritated, you know what I mean? No, they, they brought Venom in, they did everything they needed to do, they dealt with Venom, and he was done. To me, I've always felt Venom is not that interesting. Th the show makes him interesting. They make mm -hmm. the symbiote interesting. But Venom himself? Honestly, I'll be real, I don't think Venom's that interesting of a villain. They keep trying to make the... either It, it depends on how what crack they smoked that day. It's either Green <laughs> Goblin or... or uh, or Venom as Spider-Man's ultimate Joker comparison villain. Yeah. But, like, I'd be real. I don't think that... I prefer Green Goblin when he's messing... Like, I prefer... Especially No Way Home. When he's actually fucking with him at his core. I prefer that over the symbiote. I don't think the symbiote's that interesting. Black Suit Spider-Man is because we get a difference. Yeah. You know, we get a flip of the character. But Venom? I just think Venom's just another crazy, crazy, unstable villain. I don't think he's that good of a character at all. There's times he's done well and that I like, but... To me, oh, he's out? Okay, cool, I don't care. I get Doc Ock, who I used to hate, but now I've really gradually started to like. But I get all the other people, like Shocker, Electro, Rhino is cool as hell, Vulture, like, Osborne is dope as hell, especially See, the shit they do in this season. That's where I started disagreeing, because, like, all those people just named, interesting. But that's because of the hard work season one did. This shit, dude, like, I'm well, and then again, you, I mean, we already, I guess, express how different we are on these new ones, because you like Craven and you don't mind Hammerhead and Silver, uh, what's her name again? Sable. Sil Silver Sable. Silver Sable, yeah, so I'm just like, eh. But, um, so I won't touch on that much more until the end, and then we can have our big argument when we get into, like, ratings and stuff, but, like, for me, um, I really like how, well, Flash Thompson was done here. I think that he actually has a reason to be a little bit jealous, a little bit irritated, because Peter Parker is kind of an asshole. I don't, I, I'm, I'm really, that's what's so weird, it's like, I don't like Peter Parker here, and it's like, I mean it in a bad way. It's like, it's not even fun watching him because I get irritated, but like, the show's doing this on purpose, so is that a bad thing for the show? A good thing? Should I give it a point to do that? Because that's what they're trying to do, or what the fuck, you know what I mean? Like, but what do you think about Flash? Do you feel like he has any reason to kind of, because he's not really being that much of a dick, but if he was, if he was going to, boy, does he have reason to. Oh, he was, the, this is the best he's ever been. Yeah. I loved him in this season specifically because you had the whole fanboyism, but it ended up working out a little bit. You end up seeing him, like, especially when they're like, oh, hey, is Peter Parker Spider-Man? What? 
Like he's the first person to go, no, Spider Man's cool and shit. But like you also yeah. see it's like, yeah, underneath all that, uh, you know, underneath all of that, he actually has a character that actually gives a fuck, especially when he's trying to get this girl and this girl isn't like fucking falling for any of the typical bullshit that he does. And he starts seeing him actually start to change and be a better person and start to unlock the person he actually is. It's like, yeah, you start to see character growth with that. And I really enjoyed his character growth. Like Flash is a situation where you could do him if you can't. Unlike the fucking uh, MCU Spider Man, that he's just a two second joke that he embarrasses himself out of the movie. Like, I like it when they're like, oh, he's a typical bully, but underneath he actually is like a, a traumatized person. And I like when they actually give him something. I like the, uh, though, season, nothing's topic season one for me when he goes, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? All your friends are here, your grandma, your, your fucking aunt's sick, and you don't give a shit. Like, yeah. this bully of yours is telling you you're a bad person. Like, yo, you need to rethink your life. Yeah, no, that's why I liked about him in Ferdinand season one. And I like him a lot here. But then also his other friends are getting in on that too, because now, Peter, and this is, again, this is where I get like, I don't know what to think about this show because I hate this character and he's pissed me off more and more. Um, Peter, that is. But he's being called <laughs> yeah. out by his friends. Like, even the girl calls him out like, oh, I'm not going to be your number one, then fuck you, bitch. Like, go talk to her. And then she's like, hey, why are you piss her off? Like, blah, blah, blah. So it's like these characters are calling out his behavior, which is something that's not really having to be done in these movies because Peter's always a good guy and he's likable in all the movies and the cartoons and the co probably comics. I haven't read a lot of comics. Yeah, yeah. So he's always likable. This is the first time he's unlikable. But it works because the show is writing these characters to react to this Peter Parker, not how other But the characters... problem is I can't get over how much I hate the character because they call him out, but he doesn't change. At one point, yeah, he doesn't he's change. With... Yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> that's, 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 I was going to say, that's my problem. He never changed because at one point, uh, Liz is like, hey, uh, come see my play. And Spider-Man, knowing the date of the play, just joins up with the police to deal with like, hey, you want to test out this prison? Sure. Is yeah. it, but don't worry that my girlfriend is also like you know about to put on a play and she really wants me there no 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 I'm gonna deal with this bullshit where it's like if he wasn't there yeah I mean maybe some shit would have happened but like he could have left midway through or at least been there enough it's like no he literally chose to not be there it's not like a random villain just showed up and he had to leave he literally said ah fuck it I'm gonna go to and that's the top like, of continuously disrespecting this girl like the entire yeah. fucking two seasons like, so, God. <laughs> uh, the only thing that I ever saw about the show, besides the intro, because the intro is really, really good. I love the intro. The only thing I ever saw about the show was at one point somebody was calling out Spider Man, going, Hey, my sister's not your fucking second chance. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. It's the only thing I ever saw about the show. And then I finally so got context. I'm like, Yo, what the fuck? That guy is right. You're an asshole. But, you know, all this stuff's going on really interesting about the Peter Parker storyline. But then we get into the villainous shit again. And this is where we might differ. But, uh, this is interesting. Stick <laughs> the Sinister Six uh, group is just the most blandest, boringest, shittiest group of fucking bad guys now. Like, it's the most basic supervillain thing of like, well, it's not even these guys essentially, it's Dr. Ock, uh, the master planner, mastermind of everything. I where essentially, I, I, I hate him on here, and also I really hate that. It's like, I'm gonna take over the world. He literally says, Take over the world. I'm like, Oh, like, you had to become every comic book stupid fucking cartoon but the thing ever. is okay look it's hard to take over the world it's like oh once i have access to all that technology on the planet okay cool whatever uh to me it's like yeah that, that's the most typical uh, bad guy thing in the world. but to me what Lazy i writing. really felt uh but to me it's like what i ended up really enjoying about what the character was is that when you first see him he's in therapy he's like trying to deal with the fact that he was the doc off for a while and then at one point he just you know he just shows up his best friend i'm like what happened and then he actually explains like, oh yeah, by the way, it's like when he takes the, you know, when he takes the, the, the he removes the power, he doesn't hear the tentacles anymore. The AI is not taking him over. He used that guys to essentially kind of as a cloak. So it's like, oh, thank you for, because he says to one of his people, thank you for unlocking me. Thank you for waking me up. Oh, it's time to wake up. He basically trusted one of his goons to wake him up. And everyone's like, asking, why the fuck are you pretending to be crazy? I wasn't pretending. I was just literally, like, I used the weakness that was Dr. Octopus to hide the fact that I'm doing all this villainous shit. I'm like, that was incredibly brilliant, because everyone's going, oh, he's, he's, because again, even one of the characters, uh, Electro, was like, I, I used to respect you, now you're fucking nothing. He's like, no, 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 I still am. I just had to hide myself. So, like, to me, it's like, I don't care how generic your plan is. You had a, you used the mental health system to under, to keep yourself undercover <laughs> while you did your villainous shit. I'm like, okay, I kind of like you. That's really smart. Okay. And then, you know, you kind of won me over on that, but still, it was just like, as soon as I hear that, I start just tuning out. I'm like, eh, 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 comic kind of book bullshit. Like, I like comic book bullshit, but to me, it's like, a, a, me and friends were discussing, because I have a buddy of mine that to him, it's like, he prefers emotion 
to anything else him number one thing is to be it has to be emotion there has to be emotional stakes in it or he doesn't care to me make me think if mm-hmm. i'm if i'm following along and i'm thinking because to me it's like I, I like a good action movie of course i do and sometimes the stories are the stories are all the same some dude fucks some other dude over there's a bunch of nameless grunts but the thinking part comes into how you do the choreography in the room uh but when you get the stuff like again the north recent batman the dark knight even spectacular spider-man they have a lot of stuff where you're thinking where you're not like Sp- spider-man has to use his intelligence to really deal with these villains and again even deal with craven the hunter by the way, that way he defeats Kevin Hunter, you can also beat Daredevil that same way. Yeah, essentially, yeah. <laughs> You're actually like, not Daredevil's not that hard to beat. Put him at a concert and throw perfume in his face, I'd beat Daredevil. Okay. And he will smell delicious. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, no, I, I get what you mean. Um... But still, I, I I can't argue with the stuff you're saying in defense of it. It's just as a person who's not into these just in default, that was like one thing. It's like, oh, this is what I do not like about the shit. You know what I mean? But like, I like the whole, like, this is the first time in a comic book thing where I like the, the love triangle. I like the, you know, like what Peter's doing. I actually found Peter way more interesting than Spider-Man in this, which is odd. Um, and yeah, dude, like everything was just like, I'm not digging it. Um, especially, I mean, like, because we're, we're at the second quarter of the show now, yeah. and I'm just like, ugh, I almost want to just stop and just let Alan handle this, and I'll just give my overall review of what I feel about what I saw versus whatever. And I actually looked it up online, and I noticed that something really interesting was about to happen. I go back, sure. and the first fucking thing, the next episode I watched, I think it was like episode five or something, um, but it was the episode titled uh, Identity Crisis. Or oh, yeah. Was. And my <laughs> fucking boy, my boy, came back fucking Venom, dude. He returns, and it literally brought the show to a whole new level because it's strange. You know, in that same episode, we got like a full fight with Spider-Man and Sandman, which was the best thing I've seen Sandman do in any Sandman thing ever. That whole ship thing. Yeah. And then the mobsters awesome. are yeah, and the mobsters are looking at him and are like, why the fuck's he doing that? And we should probably get out of here. But like, they're assholes. So you got a new villain that's being built up. You got Sandman, who is actually saving people as he's causing damage. So he's a tweener. He's not a heel anymore. He's not a bad guy. He's just, he wants to make the big score. While Venom is literally going after Spider-Man and trying to take off his fucking mask. Yeah. Like, oh, like, he's like, I'm still, like, Venom has one goal. Or the symbiote has one goal. I'm going to reveal you, motherfucker. And not because of you, because of your family, because of your loved ones, because of your friends. I'm coming after you. And I know it's a repetitive thing because he already brought this up in season one and, you know, whatever. But, like, they're reconfirming that this is not just, like, a one-episode thing. There's an arc here. I have a goal because my character hates you so fucking much, I'm going to get your ass. To a point when the symbiote gets pulled from him, and this is one thing that was kind of odd, uh, Eddie Brock was still full of hate. I thought the symbiote was supposed to bring something out of you that you don't have already? Uh, no, no, no. It brings out something that you always have. So, oh, okay. okay. That's what, okay, so basically, in Spider-Man 3, the reason he's acting all, you know, dude, dancing in combat because that's what he always wants to be. He's just too afraid to shelter. And the spectacular Spider-Man... Uh, <laughs> It brought out uh, it brought out Peter Parker's anger and not being able to control everything, so it's doing stuff for him. Eddie Brock, but what's brilliant about it is Eddie Brock has a legitimate hatred for Peter Parker because he's just like Peter Parker's fucking over everything in his life. He's causing all his issues. He called he basically because of Peter Parker he lost his job, so he hates Peter Parker. The symbiote also has its own intelligence. So when you know it, be, you know when Spider Man beats him in, in in the mind fight, he now hates him. So the combined is like, hey, I hate Spider Man. You hate Peter Parker. Oh, guess what? We hate the same fucking person. So it basically like situation where it brings out the hatred and he has his own hatred. So it's like 10 times the normal hatred that, you know, any one of them has. So it was a compounding effect. And what I liked about what they did in season two is season one, I'm going to kill your friends to get back at you. Okay, shit, that didn't work. You know what I'm going to do? Fuck it. I'm not going to do the hard work. Yeah. I'm taking your mask off to let everyone else have some fun. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, yeah. now you're thinking, like, well, they wouldn't bring this up unless he, like, is going to succeed in doing it. So now you're like, when well, I care about Sinister Six now. I care about the mobsters. I care about Silver Sable. I care about Hammerhead, or whoever the mobster is behind this other group that's going on. I care about Dr. Octopus, and I care about just the people in general. Is Flash going to start getting mad? And then since the symbiote leaves uh, Eddie Brock, what if it gets on Flash? What if it gets on somebody in his family? What if it gets on... Exactly. Uh, you know, James, Gina, Jameson, Jibba, 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 I don't know his fucking name. <laughs> J. Jonah Jameson, or as I've been calling him, J. Jonah Hitler. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Dude, um, that mustache, I, I, I can't so, do. yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but, you know, Venom opened up a potentiality of, like, there's, like, 20 fucking ways this can go. And now, 
there's no fucking way I'm not finishing the show. Because yeah. I'm telling you, I got to a point where I was like, maybe I can just read the synopsis and watch all this and then wait till like Tuesday or Wednesday and then I'll, I'll watch this all in piecemeal. But now I'm like, I want to watch just because I want to finish it because I'm interested now. Like, what's going to happen? And then instantaneously, it becomes bullshit. After this episode, who gives a fuck what happens next? <laughs> like... We start off with Silver Sable doing Catwoman shit, trying to, like, steal things. It becomes, like, an Ocean's Eleven thing. She's doing all that laser... Yeah. Where the fuck? And Hammerhead is so fucking silly for this show. Like, it, it's... Dude, like, you can't tell me that part of you doesn't want to laugh at how dumb that shit looks. Nah, that's fine. All right. I guess. <laughs> They're saying, will we ever get the OG Black Suit from the comics on screen? Yes, we will. We fucking so have to. Spider-Man 3 I wasn't that it, I don't want it to be the next movie. I want it to be the fifth. I guess. Because again, even Tom Holland's not sure if he's going to be back for that. But let's say they do 4, 5, and 6. I want it to be the fifth movie. Because we still have to establish Spider-Man. It's like, well, how's he going to deal with the trauma? And maybe he just doesn't deal with it well. And then the CBO attaches him at the end of the movie. And guess what? We're dealing with like Spider-Man fucking 5. is going to be like, yo, we're dealing with all that trauma from everyone you fucking lost. Because, you, you know, guess what? Your life fell apart even worse. And now it's like, holy shit. Now you're like, we're going to have it where it's like, it's going to be like half the movie, your Black Suit Spider-Man, instead of like a sequence. Yeah. Which would be cool. I, I actually would not mind that. But yeah, like when we got to that part of this, man, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm upset because the romantic storyline stuff. Bill Casey, thank you very much for following on Twitch. Hopefully he's thank actually you. a real person. Uh, <laughs> actually, Hopefully. You might yeah. want to check. Yeah, I'm going to check first before I'm like, man, I love Bill Casey. He's like some racist or something. <laughs> um, but no, this person's been around for a while as far as uh, the account. So, yes, you're a real person, Bill Casey. And hopefully you come in the chat with us. Share the show with us. Talk about spectacular Spider-Mans. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you have been a fan of Spider-Man and can actually come in here and let us know if you think that we're full of shit or not. Um, but, yeah, dude, so, like... I, I didn't like Hammerhead. I didn't like Silver Sable. I didn't like uh, any of the other shit that's uh, going on, like in episode seven, eight, or nine. And then ten happens, and I liked the action stuff. I liked some of the things that was going on, but for the most part, dude, I started just kind of tapping out as far as like, I mean, especially with the Green Goblin stuff, etc. My my head was like, you, you guys, why didn't you go all the way with this Venom stuff? Like they really didn't, man. And the worst part about it is that the best thing about the show now is be. It's between Peter, Gwen, and uh, Liz. Yeah. It became the only thing I gave a shit about. You know? But what would you feel about that? And what do you think about um, episode 10? Because uh, Troy Gates in chat uh, thinks that that's, like, the best episode so far. Which is... Oh, uh, well, actually, that's my buddy, but uh, best episode. Uh, that's the one, uh, if I remember, that's the one with the fire dude? I th No, no, because yeah. it's either the fire dude or it's the one where he called it the Infinity War of it, where it was... Uh, where basically every character on screen is on screen. That was the that was one of the it was it was a really really good episode, but it was one of those things where I enjoyed season two, but my issue was because season one was so fresh and the first time I've seen this, I enjoyed season one more. I think season one is better than season two because the for instance, like Doc Ock has done better in season two, but I think that I enjoyed the symbiote stuff in season one more because it was the first time I really ever got to see that much done on screen in that short amount of period of time. But yeah. as far as like what was going on, as far as it's been, that that's the best episode of the, the of the show. No, the best episode of the show is when he's fucking having the mind battle with the symbiote and Uncle Ben saves him. Oh, for that's season the one? Best, yeah. Yeah, that's the that best the episode best of the whole show. Like, to me, I was, like, glued. Like, I'm, like, fucking leaning in because I'm like, yo, I need to fucking watch this. Like, my heart but, was, like, I literally felt like I fucking feel in this episode. Yeah. Like, I actually feel something. I was like, holy shit. I'll never, oh, bro, when he fucking, when the symbiote goes, you got no money, you got no bitches? <laughs> yeah. Like, you got nothing. And then, <laughs> and fucking Ben's like, no, what the fuck are you talking about? And he starts seeing clips from the whole show. I'm like, okay, like, this is the best episode it does i love that shit where it's like you, you're not afraid to showcase hey guess what we had a show before this episode let's remind people what happened i love when fucking shows do that when it's done properly where it's like hey guess what shit happened we're gonna use these moments to bolster up this character's confidence but with season two i never really felt like outside of like maybe a couple moments and yes it was with the venom but especially the last episode to me is the best of the season two because it does what I like to do. It does a twist. It keeps you up in the air. It throws in a bunch of people that can be suspect. And it does a lot of interesting stuff where I'm like, I don't really know where this is going to go. And it could be anybody type of scenario. I love that shit. So to me, it's like, I actually much prefer the final, like, two episodes versus anything else that came prior. Yeah, because, like, the one he was talking about, the game line one you said earlier, but, like, that's when it becomes, like, the infinity where everyone's fighting and shit. Um, yeah. I like the usage of Tombstone and Silvermane. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I don't mind them too, too much. 
Um, what I liked as far as like how crazy storylines get is I like when uh, the Green Goblin pretty much blackmails Liz's brother. What's his name? Uh, Mark. Uh, Mark. Yeah. yeah. I like that kind of stuff. That was fine. But, you know, and I we would continue talking a lot about like just storyline bits and everything like that too. But like right now I feel like I'd be doing you guys a disservice by essentially saying what else happens with this. I mean, you already heard from Alan that like the last two episodes are fucking great. I disagree with that, but that's not really important. But the thing is, is like this show, I feel like on your own narrative or whatever, or your own discretion, you should go check the show out. Um, I don't want to like give anything away because we spoiled a lot from like the middle of the show and everything too. But like where this goes, and this is why I'm going to give this extra points, is that where it goes, especially considering the love triangle uh, storyline, I'm like, I love how that ends off. Like, and I, I did not expect it. And, I, and I'm like, I, fucking good. Yeah, well, okay, now you probably can guess. No, no, I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. At one point, he cheats on his girl, and the other girl is like, no, we can't do this. I'm like, fucking finally someone has some sense. Jesus Christ. But the way they go about it and the way certain things happen, I feel like you guys can still watch the show after watching the review and being able to enjoy a lot of this and still have moments where you're kind of wondering what's going to happen next. This is a really good show on giving you a reason to watch the next episode. Now, in the beginning... Definitely was not that case. In the beginning, I feel like, oh, there's Corey. And there's Corey, finally. So, so give your review really quick. Um, I will be right back, Ums, and I'll talk to you guys in a minute. Yeah. Um, Spider-Man is definitely one of my favorite characters. If I were to make a top five, uh, you know, superheroes of all time. You know, obviously Batman's number one. Spider-Man honestly might be number two. I can't really think of anyone I like, you know, uh, more than Spider-Man and Batman. So they're definitely the top two. Flash is definitely my top five. I wouldn't know where I'd put him, but... When it comes to dealing with anything Spider-Man, I, I have a bit of a chip on my shoulder because, again, I grew up with the 90s Spider-Man. That was my Spider-Man. Everyone else had the other TV shows. Some people even grew up with Spectacular Spider-Man. So watching this show, especially season one, season two, I was like, well, you have to win me. You're going to have to win a longtime Spider-Man fan that's read a couple comics, that's seen e almost every single movie with the character, that's seen almost every animated stuff. Uh, I do collect graphic novels, and I want to get a bunch more. I want to get some actual Spider-Man ones. Because I've read Spider-Man when he's part of the Avengers and other stuff. But as far as actual... Uh, the, the theme song is fantastic. It's probably the best theme song. I like the radioactive Spider-Man. But Spectacular, it, it fits the character a lot better. Um, but the end day is like, I still think, like, this does the, the Venom storyline better than the animated show does. But I still think that the 90s animated is better. To me, personally. Maybe my business nostalgia. Because this actually has better writing. But I just think that they did more, and they did more interesting stuff in the 90s Spider-Man. So that's why, to me, it's like a... But they're like neck and fucking neck. But as far as this um, this series, this season, I think it just... It doesn't really falter. It just doesn't hit as hard as the first season did. Because the first season introduces these characters, builds them up, and does such interesting stuff with them that I feel like, to a certain degree, they kind of repeated a couple of stuff. Like, they did some interesting stuff with Venom. But he is almost repeating, like, hey, I'm going to get Peter Parker in some way because I hate him. Oh, we, we don't know where Tombstone is for most of the season. We're going to have a master planner that just does what Tombstone did for the most of season one. But, again, Doc Ock is incredibly interesting. So as much as they had repetitiveness, they still did stuff with it. But it didn't hit as hard as season one did. So I kind of sit there, like, for, I can't remember what I gave it. I think I gave it a four and a half, like the highest I could possibly give it. This is a four. Season two is a four out of five. Only because I felt like, I felt my not attention waning, but I felt the situation where I'm like, this isn't hitting as hard. Like, I didn't get that whole, I need to watch every second. Like, I need subtitles on, let's rewind that. Like, I did when I was seeing The Symbiote. Done so fucking well in season one. But with this, I'm like, no, this is a really, really good fucking show. And, oh boy, does it go downhill after this. Yeah, and honestly, uh, I'm kind of with you as far as I'll that rating fucking goes. fight you so goddamn fucking much, Troy. Every goddamn <laughs> fucking time. I'm watching the show. Why else am I saying message? He goes, pay attention to me. I'm like, I'm fucking livid. Jesus. Every, I look away slightly, pay attention, like, fuck you. you know, by the way, that's not great, because, like, Mila, dude, I, I say it to him all the time, too, and some, some other people do. So it's like, <laughs> and we're joking when we say it, by the way. But if I he hears know, it from you. Mad, fuck you. But yeah, if he hears it from you, he'd probably be like, do I, do I really have a thing with not paying attention? <laughs> No, funny. no, I know he's full of shit. Because he always does that shit. This motherfucker uh, does it every single time. We we're kind of watching something. Someone has to check something. He goes, no, pay attention. I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man. So the thing is, what I can really say about the rest of the show is that, you know, yeah, once again, I don't want to reveal things or whatever. But, uh, you know, I, I want to do this in essentially like a, a four-part thing. I'm going to give like a one review at the end. But the first quarter of the show, I think, basically, it's piss poor. It's bad. It's nowhere near the quality of even, like, the worst moments of the first season. Second quarter of the show, I think it's 
fucking awesome. And if anything, it's better than the first season. The third quarter of the show, I think, is okay. And the final quarter of the show, I also think is pretty good. I, I mean, close to amazing. But I cannot forgive that fucking... Uh, uh, those characters, man. I, I hate Craven the Hunter. I think it's stupid. I think the way they handled... Peter is more annoying in this season than they did in the first one, even though that's what they're trying to do. It just wasn't fun to see. Uh, the 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 villains. I mean, I loved all those characters ahead of time. I loved the Sinister Six. And you fucked up the shit that you didn't even have to work on. I liked them already and you made them suck. I, I, I'm sorry, but like this show has amazing shit just covered in crap. Um, and it sucks because... I still like it, and I still had a good time, and it definitely kept me going watching every single episode because of its quality and because of its good cliffhangers and because of reasons where I just like these characters. I love Liz. I love Gwen. I I like Aunt May. I thought she was fine. She wasn't in here a lot, but I liked her. Um, Vulture, he barely is in this. I liked him in the first season. Is he even really in the second season? He has like, eh, like 10 minutes He's just ten one minutes of the tall. other villains for Spider-Man to fight. Yeah. yeah well, like, fucking Rhino is... I like the Sandman they did something good with. I like the Sandman. Yeah. Um, and then Venom was cool, but what? Two episodes? Uh, come on, man. Like, yeah. Uh, overall, this is a 3.5 out of 5. So that's all I can really say. Like, it's it's a whole step above average. I recommend this show. That's why I didn't want to spoil things. If I really did not like it, I would have spoiled it, regardless if you want me to spoil it or not, because I'm a fucking asshole, and I just hate comic book stuff sometimes. But I uh, I think that if you are a comic book fan, if you like Spider-Man, if you like Marvel, if you like DC, you will like this show. The animation's great. We didn't even really talk about that, but, like, yeah, the fight great. scenes were amazing. I love the action scenes. Some of my, be some of my favorite Spider-Man stuff is in here. But I want to put out there, too, that, like, one of the things that holds this, this show back from being exactly what I wanted, from being like a 5 out of 5, because so much I will talk about what I dislike about something and then not give like a solution or whatever. It's like, well, what the fuck would you do if you're in that position? And I'll shut the fuck up sometimes when I'm like, hey, I wouldn't know how to. So I'll just stop. I'll just step back and say, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. This, I could totally make this better if I was writing it. For one, um, I actually wrote some notes down too, so I don't want to get anything fucking wrong here. Yeah. Um, but for one, I would have had Flash Thompson become Venom and start attacking not just um, not just Peter or whatever, but like I would have him like I, I would have the symbiote jump from person to person. Like Flash would be one of them, but I would have loved to see like maybe Silver Silver Sable become Venom at a certain point, and then it leaves her, and Peter has to keep like you know stopping shit from happening. I would also you like want to do Jason X. No, or no. Jason goes to hell. Jason goes to hell. That no, that was terrible. Jason doesn't <laughs> go to hell. Which is that was the plot of the movie. Jason just got jumped from a random person. Yeah, random Jason person. goes into your body and then you throw up. That's what. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I wish we would have give Vulture something to do. Uh, you know, what I mean, I wish we would have done more with the alien ship and Jameson's brother or James, Jameson's uh, brother. Were uh, it wasn't his brother. Was that his dad? His son. His son. His son. Okay, someone was someone's dad or whatever. But yeah. Um, they could do something really interesting with that. That I would have loved. And honestly, like with the symbiote jumping from person to person, like that idea in my head, I was like, oh, I know where the show's going to go. They're going to make Spider-Man look so villainous because of symbiote that the Sinister Six is going to feel like they are, are helping the world by getting rid of Spider-Man because they probably believe that Spider-Man turned evil or he's always been evil. That would have been such a cool storyline that the Sinister Six, Sinister Six actually isn't that terrible. They would be, you know, they'd just be like, "Hey, like we're assholes, but he's an asshole too. He's not really rehabilitating our behavior. He's a piece of shit." I would have loved that because it's not making Spider-Man evil, you know. They, it's not a fucking thing, but like, you know, the way he's being framed, the way Eddie Brock can't get over, like, "Hey, Spider-Man's a piece of shit. Peter's a piece of shit." Blah blah. blah. It would have been really cool if the villains actually had a reason to go after him, except for some dumb shit like, "We gotta take over the world." I oh like what were you doing? <laughs> Stupid. Villains take over the world sometimes, buddy, and they fail. No, but it's it's all the time. It's not sometimes. It's all the fucking time. I don't know. They're like, pretty good in the show to really only have. This show one came in two thousand eight, right? Yeah, I talk about the show. Like had only yeah. really one time where the one villain said, "Fuck it." I'm, I no, but we're talking about right, no, we're talking about writing wants... the show though. Like like I understand that these characters that hasn't happened yet, but it's like. We're talking about, like, rating-wise. Like, what would I do to make a better story, make it better to watch, etc., yeah. do something a little bit different? This story has been told for fucking 80 to almost 90 years by 2008. Now, it's been 100 years. <laughs> like, it's been 13 years since 2008. They've been telling this story for 100-plus years over and over and over and over again. Stop fucking doing the same thing. If you're writing, write! Don't copy and paste. Don't fucking steal someone else's idea for the 50th fucking time. Be creative. Fuck. It is creative. Shit. 
<laughs> God. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And yes, I want to do the Web of Shadows goddamn... Uh, I want the Web of Shadows adapted. Web of Shadows is the best Spider-Man game ever made. Fucking don't come at me. I will not <laughs> elaborate anymore. It is the best Spider-Man game. I don't know. I mean, no, I, I can see that. That, was, that wasn't bad. Cause I, I think I watched you play it once, or if not, you brought it up and then I looked up gameplay of it. We played uh, We played it on back. Actually, I just realized I never did... I have a gaming show. Yeah, just play your, play your games. Why don't I fucking play that? Yeah. You can play that and Superman 1 and all this shit. I'm uh, not playing Superman 64. Go fuck no, no, not that one. The, the GameCube one. Wasn't there a GameCube one? Oh, yeah, there was. That game, the, the only good Superman game ever made, which was uh, Rise of Metallo or something like that. Yeah, some shit. Um, but yeah, this show, like I said, 3.5 out of 5. Still good. And I will say that, um, you know, this Peter Parker is definitely not my, my favorite. My favorite is actually from Marvel's 2018 video game, uh, Marvel Spider-Man. I That's my favorite Peter Parker, but that game... Just so you know, I hate that game. I think the game sucks. But if I'm watching someone play it and I'm just enjoying Peter, I think that is still the best Peter. And as far as the best Spider-Man movie, I still think No Way Home is the best entertainment I ever got out of Spider-Man. No Way Home is amazing, followed by, closely followed by, uh, Spider-Verse. Because Spider-Verse is fucking Spider-Verse amazing. is the number one Spider-Man movie of all time. I don't give a fuck. Number yes. two is No Way Home. But either way, as like depending on the day, I'll, I'll see, I'll agree with you. And then I'll be like, well... I did like some of the things. No way home. I don't want to spoil anything. Still, it's still not on Blu-ray, so we'll wait. But you know, yeah. I uh, but this was good. This was actually cool. Uh, they're like the fact you surf a bad guy and then pop him into the air combo was crazy. Yeah, that's fucking nuts. And yeah, game. yeah, because uh, with the uh, web of shadows, you can surf people on the sides of buildings and shit. It was fucking wild. That was a they're good like, time for games, by the way. Yeah, they're like, hey, we want to make a Spider-Man game, but we also want to make a Tony Hawk game. Okay, you can do both. Fuck it. Malala in chat says, I'd say what the show did so well is adapted the very class Spider-Man stories more accurately to the core of the character in the comics, more so than any of the other products, save some for the 90s Spider-Man. Yeah, um, I, I will say that, like, because I, I don't know if that's true or not, even in opinion, because I haven't seen a lot of Mostly the true. Most of it is, especially the symbiote, especially with the, uh, the Doc Ock stuff. As far as the Electro and Shocker, I'm not really sure. Yeah, um, they said to be fair to judge this as final season is unfair given the five season plan they had. Yeah, that's the thing is like I don't they probably care. had a lot. Uh, uh, I'll be real, like he's saying that directly to me because I'm like I think the '90s Spider Man is better than this. Yeah, I had five seasons, so I had a more of a planned out. But it is what it is. Like it's not like season three is coming out and I can still judge it. It's like this show's been over for like ten years. Like I can sit here and judge the two seasons here are good, but people are saying it's better than five seasons of television. I'm sorry, it's not. Yeah, I um. But I see where he's going. I, I see where he's coming from a little bit, and because like the thing is like that romantic storyline. Oh, I'm so curious where that was going to turn into. Because the one thing that this show did very very well that a lot of shows don't is I'm like I want that season three so bad, and I are just a sequel series. Now, granted, you're saying Ultimate Spider-Man sucks. I don't know if that's a continuation of this particular arc, but if no. it is, I still want to watch. It. I don't give a fuck. I want to watch it. Even okay, it's, it's not. It's a. It's essentially a reboot, and then that show. It was decently successful and they kept going for a couple seasons and then they rebooted again to do oh the Spider-Man XD which was some of the worst shit I've ever seen in my life but to just completely go to Spider-Man apparently from what I could tell this creator moved on to Young Justice you want to watch some good ass you want to watch the same quality of writing but for the DC characters and not Batman and Superman all that shit they're in the show but that's not about them you want like this? Like they literally do Young Justice with for season one and season two, some of the best animated shit I've ever seen. Where they're doing like Robin, Aqualad, uh, what you call it, uh, Superboy, because he literally doesn't have an anything. They call him Cal, and they have a uh, Beast Boy as well. Oh no, does Beast Boy? Like, no, Beast Boy comes in way fucking later. I'm trying to remember who um, uh, Miss Martian. It's some of the mm. best writing I've ever seen in comic books. Like I'm, who, like, I'm curious about that. Is, I actually yeah, want to check that out. It's not necessarily a sequel series, but the creator moved on to another project. It's a, it's a spiritual successor in the sense of, like, you yeah. want to see this type of quality continue on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, dude, I'm, I'm curious to see what it's like, though. Um, which come a lot. It's very in line with this. It's very in line with this arc. And for what I know, they do have plans for characters like Hobgoblin, Carnage, Spider-Man, No More, and the death of Gwen Stacy in the plans. So, yeah, or at least they did. Yeah, and yeah. Um, that's the thing, man. Like, it sucks because, you know, I... You never know what's going to happen with certain storylines and everything, too, because shows just kind of like, especially when you're a Netflix fan, holy fuck. Don't ever <laughs> fall in love with a Netflix show, whatever you do. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Uh, yeah, this guy just doesn't want to stop, Dom. <laughs> Let me see really quick. I'll get rid of this dude. You know, like, what the f Yeah, just get rid of him real quick. But yeah, yeah, it's Netflix shows. Like, don't, do not fall in love with them. 
Uh, but with this, when it comes to because the uh, Disney for Disney Plus is doing another animated Spider Man show that's going to be connected more to the MCU Spider Man, so it might be a limited series. But if Disney or Sony's like, hey, we want to do another Spider Man animated show, I mean, I'm all for it. I want another Batman animated show just because I want to see more Batman just in general. But like at this point, it's like there have been so many bad Spider Man shows in a row, I kind of almost don't want anymore because I'm tired of it. Yeah. Um, but anyways, guys, well, like I said, that's it for the show, whatever. Go enjoy. You double toasted. Um, we're going to be back tomorrow for more reviews and stuff, too. I'm probably going to watch X. I want to watch Lamb. Um, I'm going to force you to watch West Side Stories and say West Coast again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, I'm not watching that shit because if I accidentally like it, she's going to sit there and uh, assume that I love musicals. <laughs> no, yeah, I, no one should ever assume that for anybody because musicals are terrible. But... Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and then the reason why I'm doing that, by the way, those two particular movies, and Woman in the Window, we got to review that too. I already watched it. But the reason why we're doing that is because this week, for sure, probably on Wednesday, I'm going to be doing my top five. Well, I'm not going to say five. It's probably be like 13 or 15. But I'm going to be doing my top movies of the year. I'm going to be ranking them. And then also probably going to be ranking some TV shows. Won't be as long as that. Same thing with the games. Um, you know, the Oscars is here. Spoiler alert, um, Halloween Kills is number one. Definitely not, but it's on there. For sure, because it's a good film and it's fun. It's really it's not a fun movie that it's people should enjoy. Movie. If if it really shouldn't. See, hey, just like if someone doesn't like chips because it's bad for you, blah, blah blah. Someone might really like chips. So if you bring them chips, yes, on the checklist, it's horrible for the human body, etc. But that person might think, dude, you are the shit. These chips are a five out of five. No one even cooked it. It's fucking great. I love it. Just pull out of a bag. These chips are a five out of five. Oh, great. ladies, catch up. Jesus, fucking like. Why are you so bad at things? These are these are the five out of five. Halloween kills fucking sucks. That has been the latest sponsor. I hope yeah. Halloween kills sucks. <laughs> the snack that smokes crack. Um. Anyways, guys. With that said, makes no sense. He's not supposed to. Um. Because snacks don't smile crack or anything. It's a Pepperidge Farm show. Because the snack that smiles. It back. really isn't. It's actually a Goldfish show. Pepperidge Farm is. That's Pepperidge Farm. Remember? Are you a fucking idiot? Pepperidge Farm is, is Pepper Goldfish. They have a big Pepperidge Farm logo. I eat Goldfish all the time. You know what? No one cares. Let's move on. No, no, let's 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 stay here, dummy big dum dum. Like I'm fucking trying to be a smart ass. And you're Those stupid. Those are the Pepperidge Farms. Uh, do you remember the Pepperidge Farm remembers? No, they say this night smells bad. It's goldfish. It's stupid. Pepperidge Farm Company. Let's see what they fucking make. Do they make goldfish? Yes. Are you sure? Are you really having to look this up? I'm I'm Captain I'm Goldfish. Looking it up right now. I like. Uh, I know I talk a lot of dumb shit, but you know with my snacks, I, I am fucking... Okay, they do. Pepper Strong does a lot of shit. Can, can, can I just show you something? You don't know, You also don't have good taste in them. Aw, so. uh, look, my Google's not working again. Motherfucker! Ah, thank you, Google. Oh, here we go. Yeah, you're welcome, motherfucker. Uh, anyways, okay, here we go, here we go. Goldfish, and what's on top of the fucking logo right there, sir? Uh, do, not Not made for human consumption. No, no, no. Look at that. Right here, Pepperidge Farm, right above the fucking logo. Nobody dude. can read that. Right there, Pepperidge Farm. Pepperidge Farm. Wow, I'm glad you can read that. Hey, where's Dehan? Yeah, and here's shut up. Uh, <laughs> you know, Dehan's just chilling. It's like I can say his name right, dumb shit. Uh, it pops in and you'll somehow forget it. I know. I get nervous now every time Dehan's in. I'm like, oh, don't get it wrong. Don't get it wrong. Well, you've been saying you've been saying symbiote wrong this entire fucking show. And oh, I could care less, you fucking nerds. Oh, it's, yeah, it's symbiote. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what that is outside of what the fucking Venom story is? You Jack Maggins. I mean, it's I do. <laughs> that explains a lot, huh? Dry penis. No, so the thing is, I have a degree, you fucking asshole. <laughs> yeah, a degree and not getting pussy because fucking nerd shit. No, <laughs> I'm joking. Wow. I'm not getting a lot of pussy either. So. I'll fuck you up, bro. I'm sorry. You, you nerds asked for it. Do you be picking on me and shit? Nobody. Literally, you're saying no. Wrong you shit. picked on me. You picked on me no, first. No, you picked on everyone at all times. What did I do? I literally didn't call you out the whole fucking show when you're saying symbiote the whole time. Symbiote. It's a word that existed before the comics. Yeah, but you're a bitch. No one likes you. They love me. Nobody does. I'm the snack that smiles back. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah. I you hope smile? your phone. Hope your phone keeps fucking. Uh, wow. Anyways, here's the thing, guys. We're going to get out of here. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck we're talking about anymore. Um, Berman Alley. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Berman Alley. Go check him out and everything, too. He's going to be doing lots of stuff. And probably playing those games he propped earlier. But we out this bitch. Yes, Goodbye, everybody. Check me everybody. out on my Twitch channel. We'll be playing some stuff. What did I play today? I played uh, Final Fantasy. That game sucked. <laughs> we'll probably talk about that tomorrow. 
Uh, people, goodbye. Stay toasty. Hit the chat and all that good stuff. Bye, bitches. <laughs>